You find yourself in a dank dungeon. Nowhere to be seen or your friends or the mercenary that you hired. Not amidst this gloom, illumined only by the gloomy blue light of phosphorescent toadstools. An image flashes in your mind, a tattooed face of your pirate friend, Morin, wide-eyed with terror, running pell-mell before you, looking over their shoulder amidst a flickering torchlight. Back to the present. The gloom, the sickly smell like a knacker's fire smoke billowing through a moldy cheesecloth. The dull throb of your memory aches through a general numbness. You turn in an attempt to orient yourself and wobble. As if you are beneath the sea under a passing wave. The hot pressure in your skull builds until you think you'll be sick. Another memory. The taste of blood. The sight of your own arms reaching out before you bloody fingernails. In a loose flagstone straining against a terrible suction. Like... Mire that envelops a loose boot. <laughs> Sunlight plays over your hands. You look up and see the smiling face of Orlo, the jolly little wizard gnome. Mm, but her face is contorted by sorrow, pity, and guilt as she looks you in the eyes and slowly closes the door. <laughs> Back to the now. You are sick. <clears throat> Vomiting down your front. It's a pasty gray gruel that quickly hardens. It looks like you've been sick before while you were asleep. Layers of the stuff have built up like papier mache. You're encased in it. <laughs> Immobile. Panicked. You look about. You see a familiar face there by a glowing toadstool. It's the cynical outlander mercenary. Canade he appears to be asleep. You try to call out to him, but produce only another wave of lacquer, some vomit glue. <laughs> by the time you look up from this one, Canade is coming closer, like a hand drawn towards your face in a great arm of motile, gooey, Goo-goo. It seems he's encased as the same as you. You look down and see a glistening mass of the stuff connects the both of you. A terrible explosion of cold fear rends your guts. You see that this lumpy form that you have been encased in is peppered with pupilless faces and the skulls of past victims. Yes, your eyes roll slowly up into your skull against your wishes as you two become another brick in the gooey, gooky, pukey mortar of a happy Chthonian. Welcome to Happy Chthonian. I'm Kristoff. Uh, and in this video, I'm sharing footage of a game that I ran uh, for some players. Two of them had never played before uh, in, in the adventure game, role-playing game world. And we played the wonderful uh, Haunting of Ypsilon 14 by DJ Chapman. Uh, instead of Mothership, we used Adventure Hour by Samuel James. I'll put links to these below. Uh, and we made characters using All Dice Space Truckers, my sci-fi character creator. Uh, and another link to a video where we did the character creation. Uh, I gave them all secrets to give them some sense of paranoia. And then we just, you know, jumped in, rolled some dice. Some people died, some people lived. Yeah. Uh, so for your edification, if you're ever running this adventure, or if you just like watching people play nerd games, without further ado... The Haunting of Ypsilon 14. <laughs> So is this this is like a cooperative game, right? Yes. We're all, okay. Okay. We're all we're working same, together. Yeah, yeah please. Same yeah, so we're all we're all on the same cruise ship. Um, for the Kala Corporation. Yeah. Okay. 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 For how do you spell? 
K A L A. Okay, perfect. <sighs> okay. Excellent note taking. You've taken off, you've traveled, and now you've come out of cryosleep, kind of shaken off the dust out of your eyes, gotten some protein gruel, Call Corporation, uh, you know, neutral protein gruel. You've kind of freshened everybody up, and you're in position to dock, and you can see the asteroid before you first. You know, yay big, growing, growing, growing over the span of five minutes. It's all you can see to the left and the, the right, a huge asteroid, and you can see the blinking lights of the mining platform station. So you move towards those. You can see there's another ship a oh, ways away, uh, but in the darkness of space, you can't make out uh, which, what type of ship it is. Um, you, so you can pass that by and you go into the docking platform and you're hailed as you approach. It says, uh, uh, KCS Hunsit, this is Sonja Verhoeven of Ypsilon 14. You are cleared for docking. Uh, welcome to the 14, the XIV. Welcome to the XIV. Thank you, sir. We'll, we'll dock as, uh, as instructed. You go into position. <laughs> Coupling is met. The airlock is unleashed after everything's locked in place so there won't be any you know, vacuum of space sucking people out of the mine problem. Uh, and you clink, 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 clink through into a large workroom. Now, whenever time passes, I roll some dice because, you know, time passes, things happen. So I want to know what's happening. It's a... <laughs> Time's passing. The anticipation <laughs> is getting the better of us. Big old room. Take scientists back. We only have scientists here. Uh, in this room, there's a clanging, ging, 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 and echoing. It's kind of like a big warehouse room. Uh, and in one corner, there's a big generator, uh, and standing by it. Uh, you can tell by her gear that she's an officer in the Kala Corporation. And she has, like, you know, blaze orange mining vests and a helmet on. She's at the workstation. And you make up. That's the person who, like, hailed you in and welcomed you in. Uh, got the really pristine vest and hard hat. And across from her, like, in the other corner, there's a bunch of cubbies with hard hats and vac suits and vests. Like, vac suits so you can go into the vacuum of space and be okay. Uh, there's like seven or eight of them hanging there and a bunch of tools and stuff. Those ones have been down in the mine. What she's wearing looks like it's never actually seen uh, action. So she's there at the computer for a big like <sighs> ventilation thing up above the uh, uh, generator. You come in <sighs> through the docking doors uh, and she goes to approach you. Uh, and She goes past a big pit in the floor. It's like a freight elevator. Uh, and as she approaches out from a hallway to the sign. It's kind of like the docking bay over here, the elevator, the cubbies and tools. And then there's a hallway. Two guys come running out of the hallway. It's like, well, uh, or a, a lady, you know, a woman with a hard hat like on backwards with a little furry alien sticker on the front of it. <laughs> comes running and he's like, are the supplies here yet? Are the supplies? And then a uh, guy runs into the back of her. Uh, remember. Yes, yes. Does he yes. knock her over? He like, like runs in nearly and then like like lifts her up by the shoulders and looks over and says, It is, it's the supplies and people. Uh welcome to the XIV is sort of like shuffles past and goes towards them, and then the officer goes in front of them. So you got three people like kind of running in to meet you. And the officer oh, goes ahead and says, Jerome, stand down for a moment. So stand down. And he looks at the other guy. Uh says, welcome to the XIV. Uh, your ore is still being loaded. She gestures to the big pit in the floor. They're like these tubes sucking up ore and depositing them into big crates. Uh, we look forward uh, to your supply shipment. It's probably going to take at least another hour or two to get things loaded and unloaded. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> You've, or it looks at the mercenary. 
and sort of looks at you quizzically and says, you've been here before. Yes, ma'am. I Kna, right? Krikna, it is. Krikna, nice to meet you. Uh, again, <laughs> see you again. Anyway, yeah. Welcome back. And, and then the other person comes forward and says, uh, I'm relatively new here, never met you. Jerome, nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Holds out a hand to the android. Yes. <laughs> ah, skin job. All right. <laughs> and then hand to the pilot. Yeah, right on. All right. All right. And then shuffling past him is the, the girl with the, uh, uh, you know, decaled. She's kind of hunching and going towards your docking bay. It's like, you got supplies, right? Did you bring food supplies? We brought everything. Mm-hmm. Everything that you need. I'll help unload. Raises her hand. Uh, so that's kind of the first impression, and she moves to go get like a loading <laughs> robo mech to help carry in a pallet of stuff. Uh, what do you do? There's all the stuff I described in this room. Hallway going up to where the crew are. It's computer and, voop, 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 and all and these three people. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, it's just. Uh, down the hallway there, and she points down the hall where those two kind of clowns came from. And then to the right is the uh, showers in Latrine. Thank you. I'll, I'll need to use that pretty quickly here. That's of course. Long journey. Yeah. Probably still coming out of cryo. Yeah. Uh, where is the person overseeing this operation? That would be me. Uh, Sonia sort of uh, uh, perks up and says, yes. Uh, and the overseer, any questions you have about how the place is running or a status update, you know, I keep good track of that. She sort of unconsciously gestures to a blue key card she wears on a lanyard around her neck, like her status symbol. <laughs> well, we, we will need confirmation that we dropped off this order, so we will need... That would be Mike. Mike needs to sign the shipping manifest, and he's... Gone missing, and then the uh, fellow who's dun, dun, dun. kind of been introducing himself to says, "Not technically gone missing though, because you said it has to be forty-eight hours before he's gone missing. You can send someone to look for him, so we don't have to look for him because he hasn't really gone missing." Uh-huh. And she says, "He has gone missing. Someone did volunteer to look for him, and in eight hours, I will assign other people to do the same." She looks at him and says, "He's just drunk." Happened before, and she says, no, he's not. <laughs> like, happened before. He walks over to, uh, there's one other feature in this room. There's like a med, you know, it's a med bot. It's basically just a mm. stick with a bunch of arms coming out of it behind. Uh, it's, it's the smallest first aid station you could imagine. It's basically just a shower curtain and this thing with pokey sticks and a little chest of drawers. And he goes over there and pulls out a lollipop and sticks it in his mouth. He's like, I'm going to help on little things, too. And she turns back to you and says, yes, Mike has gone missing. The airlocks weren't open. There's no trace of him. Uh, Kantaro, one of our drillers, is volunteered to go down into the mines and look for him. But yes, hopefully they'll be back soon. They can try and sign your manifest. All right. Well, I know you said it'd take a few hours to get it loaded. If in an hour he's not back, we shall set out and Uh find him. That would be very, very much appreciated. Yes, you know, I'm happy to send a commendation to the corporation uh, if you'd be willing to volunteer and do that. Okay, I'm back now. And what is the quality of the ore that you are going to <laughs> give to us? Well, uh, it's mostly nickel and cadmium. It's pretty typical for the Epsilon asteroid belt. Um, yeah, it's. They set up here because of the size, right? If they're going to fix one of these mines, I think this particular, she looks around, and you can see there's it's just a grungy big room. And the hallway that you went through, there are like seams and joints where the hall, it's like a, a, a trailer or something mm. uh, where it doesn't quite fit. And uh, you, you went to the bathroom and you saw one of the showers is like busted and has like a little sign in it out of order. Uh, and she says, this particular mining installation has been installed on three of the other Ypsilons and, uh, uh, you know, we've kind of drained them of nickel and cadmium and now we're under this one. Mm. It's nothing special. I mean, there's a weird uh, 
there was a weird substance we found, but that was three months ago, uh, and we haven't found any of it since. And what did you do with that substance that you found? It was a slime, so you know we worried whether her foot was biochemical, and we sent a sample to corporation, and they came back and said it was probably residue from a prior expedition out here. Did the uh, uh, corporation give you any other orders regarding the slime or the residue? No, they okay. basically just confirmed that it was not a, right. It was a bio slime from Earth 2 that was left by an expedition. So I'm not right home about. Yeah. Who's in charge of the maintenance around here? I noticed that the shower was uh, in terrible shape. Yeah, yeah, about that. <laughs> <clears throat> Has the Mike uh, actually? Oh, Mike, gonna blame everything on Mike, huh? Well, I listen. Mike is the lead engineer and yeah. basically my uh, partner, although technically I'm a superior. But he's uh, yeah. he broke the shower in an accident uh, the night before. I guess the night before last. Yeah, he came to me. Uh, and, and then, then, and then sort of was trying to adjust it, and it came down. And then he went missing. Yeah. Yes. He was acting weird. Uh, this is uh, Jerome introduced himself. He's coming back with a woman with the head. Uh, Morgan said so. She said, yeah, he was. He was acting kind of weird. Him and uh, Kantaro, they went down to tell that scientist it was time for chow. And ever since they came back, they both been stinky. And they take a pallet that has like a, fri a refrigerator basically on it, except it's like four times as big as our refrigerators and it's a smart refrigerator. And as they're like hover carting it down the hall towards where their mess hall is, you can see one of them's prying at it with a, a screwdriver and busting it open and like, more cumin! <laughs> <laughs> so was Morgan the last person to see Mike? Uh... I'm on my lunch break, but I'm going to be in the mess hall, and we can talk to you. Morgan just keeps going down the hall. And, uh, okay, Morgan, I'll follow you. <laughs> Sonia, the, Sonia says, the last person to see Mike, Morgan saw Mike, and he said, he, he spoke with Rosa after, well, he spoke with me after breaking the shower, and then he spoke with Rosa before going to bed, and he hadn't seen since. Hmm. While well, I have been going around the ship and just marveling and making sure everything is perfectly in place, have I overheard anything as I've been walking around? Great. Roll a d10. Oh, good question. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to have a veteran on this thing. <laughs> so as you were uh, going through the ship, I'm imagining like you looked at the workstation computer that Sonia was at and, you know, uh, uh, it's in perfect working condition despite getting beat up and installed on a bunch of different asteroids. I imagine you would appreciate just the sort of resiliency that, that machine shows, uh, the vents above, uh, a little creaky, a little like loose fixture, but again, just the fact that this has been up and down in so many different places. Uh, you go down the uh, to uh, appreciate the docking bay, which you guys kind of like rush through to get here. You go back towards your ship and just look at where the docking is. And sure enough, those couple those couplings are just solid, airtight. There's not any vacuum bleed visible from this side. You would give it a 100% security rating. It's fantastic. And as you're there, you hear echoing from your own ship, the people who are unloading uh, uh, Morgan and Jerome are loading out of your loading area, the big refrigerator, basically. Uh, and uh, Morgan says to Jerome, do you really think that Mike uh, just got drunk and went missing? Because he hasn't drank in like months, over a year. I, like he's like, stop drinking. Morgan is like, I'm, why a year ago, gets drunk, gets lost, we all go down, oh no, where's Mike? Where's Mike? Looking for Mike. And then he's drunk with a bottle of hooch in a little cranny nook in the mine. And now he goes missing again. 
And Sonia's like, oh no. He goes, it doesn't take a neuroscientist to figure out what happened, okay? Do you think they have cumin in here? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the scuttlebutt you've heard going around. Thank you. Okay, are you still talking with people? Uh, I would like to go up to my crewmates and tell them what I just heard. Right. So that's sort of passed along to you, and if you want it to be sort of secret, just a huddle between you, that's yes, fine. Please. No, no one else hears. Yeah. I want right. to keep it close to my humans. <laughs> <laughs> my <Thank> people. <laughs> so she creature. She creature. Right. <laughs> Or do we do we go looking for Mike? Do we yeah, uh, I'll, keep talking with Sonia? Give a visual of this space with the elevator, the med bay, such as it is, your docking bay, where your ship is. Docking bay one. There's another docking bay uh, that you just notice as you're looking around. Uh, and then in the corner was the computer vent generator kind of thing and then the cubbies let's give you an idea of what kind of what there is to click on and then this is to the mess the bathrooms etc how many people are on ipsilum 14 uh there are seven crew she she's not responding as slowly as i am this is christoph doing some math in my head no uh, there's eight of us, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's, uh... Eight, eight, of, eight, eight of you total to do all the mining and... Well, there's a leader, a head engineer, backup engineer, a breaker, a head driller. He's on Jerome, he's the assistant driller. Kentaro is a loader. Morgan, who unloaded your uh, refrigerator, she's also a loader. Rosa is the assistant engineer. Okay. Well, where is this Rosa? I think she wanted to. She wanted to join Kentaro, looking for Mike, but she wanted to eat first, so I'm sure she's in mm. the next hall. And how long ago was it that you've seen Kentaro and Rosa? Yes, Rosa. Just, I mean, uh, she was just woke up about an hour ago and got the news that Mike was still missing, so he decided to break fast and then head down there. Kentara went down there two hours, two or three hours ago. He's been looking in the mine. There are a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of totally mined out tunnels. Mm -hmm. point, we're probably not going to be here for more than another year and we'll move on to another spot on this asteroid. Is that elevator the only way to get down into the mine? Yes. Yes. <laughs> As you say that, the place shudders, the lights flash on and off, you see her eyes roll as, as this happens, and the elevator, which was uh, down in the mine, you hear it uh, begin to approach. She says, it's, uh, it's not been working quite well this past week, but on and off. Anyway, I'm working on fixing it. Well, I would be happy to have a look at it. Yes. It takes like 10 minutes for it to get to the top, but once it does, I would appreciate it if we could have some Absolutely. mechanics eyes on it. Yes, yeah. And then a nice tour of the down below with my crew would be deeply appreciated. Great. Yes. Kantara is the person I would usually... Well, Rosa's going down there, so she can give you a tour. Yeah, nice. Great. So you can wait for the elevator or go find other folks to talk to or... Anything else you can think of? We're, ra we're waiting for Rosa to bring us down. Um, so who... When was the last shipment and was there hooch on the shipment? When was the last shipment? Mm, good question. She says, uh, and she pulls up the computer terminal. You can kind of see over your shoulder and she says, Schedule. You've arrived with resupply. The research ship came. There is another, there's a ninth person uh, visiting geologist. Uh, he's in his ship. There, the Horn of Plenty. And that came 
three three weeks ago and resupplied. They're our usual uh, resupply. The Hunsa has never been here before. <laughs> so they usually come every month or... Oh. Yeah. So why are we Hooch? Here? You know, now that you mention the Hooch, I know that uh, uh, Jonin on the Horn of Plenty does have a deal with Re. Uh, anyway, yes, it's possible that the Horn of Plenty resupply included some uh, 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 recreational substances. Okay. And do you, do you know why the Horn of Plenty is not carrying out this mission and why we were asked to? I was going to ask you the same thing. She brings mm. back to the building. We are just given instructions to come here to uh, resupply uh, this Epsilon 14. Okay. So, and that wasn't your initial, if that wasn't your initial project that the corporation must have had some reason, it could be that the Horn of Plenty was rerouted or all right, had some well, problem. You know, how frequently does uh, the Horn of Plenty, their, um, their people come to visit and inspect uh, this operation? Because you mentioned the elevators not working well. Right. The shower is broken. What, what else is broken, and what, when was the last time this has been inspected? Why is it Mike fixing these things as head engineer? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the Horn of Plenty is not an engineering ship or even a system ship. And I'm going to roll 2d6s at this point to see just how well she thinks of being questioned by this pilot. If it's a 7, she's neutral. If it's a 2, she's hostile. If it's a 12, you know, she's friendly. She's down with this. Let's see. A 10. So she's, uh, she's open to being questioned about this. The Horn of Plenty, uh, not a uh, ship. The Vasquez XV uh, is a company ship that comes out and picks up ore. You're kind of doing, uh, doing double duty here mm. uh, with pickup and resupply. Uh, but they sometimes have an engineer on board. Let me check. And again, she pulls out the hand thing and does a diagnostics check. I mean, we check diagnostics pretty, pretty regularly ourselves. And I think, except for the shower, which, by the way, only happened two days ago. And we are working on it. And we have eight working shower cells. So if you would like to take a shower, you're welcome. Systems check. Warning. Air filters last replaced 455 days ago. 255 days past recommendation, but it's not, uh, we're still within uh, uh, acceptable operating conditions. Shower five is out of order. Mine shaft elevator last maintained 455 days ago to 155 days past recommendation, but that was because uh, the Vasquez was supposed to bring out an engineer, what, like a year ago, and he didn't show up because he got reassigned to a mission along the way, and I sent a request back to corporation and they haven't sent it to me so that's not on my head and airflow 82 percent is news to me that was not the case last time suboptimal replace filters and check vents for blockages mm. but all systems within acceptable stay here will be short yeah <laughs> um yeah. Excuse Once me. Once we have all of our ore, there's no reason for you to stay. Yep. <laughs> no shower is necessary. Um, Sonia, as we were coming in to Ypsilon 14, we noticed an unidentified craft in your orbit. Yes. Do you have an idea of what that could be? That's the geologist. Uh, he came in on rather a nice uh, company ship. Uh, and I don't, I'm not good at coming up with spec jargon, but uh, maybe the pilot can come up with a fancy hot rod ship name for a nice research ship. XR-17. The XR-17. <laughs> so we came in on an XR-17 company ship, pretty pristine, and apparently he's just doing a check on the geology of the asteroid. He's been going down to the mines back and forth for what's been a month now. He did mention yesterday that he'd discovered something uh, he was saying it into a tape recorder that he always carries around with him and went into a ship. He didn't make it for Chow, 
last night or this morning. So where was it going, uh, or um, where where was he going, or where was he uh, departing from Great. when we saw that ship? Great. Well, he's docked now. You saw his ship still and docked in place. Mm -hmm. He's attached to us here. In fact, she points to, you came through one of the kind of docking doors, and there's one next to you between the Met Bay and yours. His ship is through there. Um, I could unlock the uh, airlock from here, but he's got another lock on his side. And okay. It's password protected, I should imagine, if it's an X-17. Um, mm. Yeah, he's been doing, sur he's been surveying already mined tunnels uh, to see if the Ypsilon asteroids have some new mineral, I forget what he said, something for the new microprocessors they call it, or is making. And he's not reporting to you what his, what his findings are? He doesn't have to. Technically, he owns. Technically what? Technically, he works for the corporation in their geology uh, uh, section, as opposed to their mining uh, division. And in the geology division, he does uh, outrank me. Mm. How long has he been doing this? Uh, the last month. I think we should check those vents. There's a new blockage in there. That is new. There could be Mike so, stuck in a vent. Some time has passed, so I roll dice. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. You hear a commotion from down the hall. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, and you hear a new voice you haven't heard. It's sort of echoing down the hall. It says, Rosa, 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 it was only a joke. Put him down. And you hear another voice, yeah, put me down. And Sonny says, I have to take care of something. She runs past you uh, down the hall towards the mess hall. <laughs> take it back. Take it back. You hear. <laughs> Guys. Guys, I'm making tacos. We can hash this out over tacos. <laughs> so, what do you do? You're alone now in, in this room as she's run out to fix that. And the elevator clicks into position. Uh, rackety old. You could hear it screeching, growing louder over the past few minutes. Mm. And on the elevator, <laughs> a cat. Uh, was riding it and sort of before it even comes to stop, it jumps up to get off there as fast as it can and it bolts out of here, hair on end, freaked out. Uh, and it looks back uh, towards you in the elevator and hisses and goes off towards, you know, the crew quarters down that hallway. Mm, you're strange. I've never seen that in a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Very emotional. <laughs> They're very emotional. The robot uh, doctor in the corner uh, chimes in. I'm not a veterinarian, but I have taken care of Prince. His vaccines are up to date. <laughs> <laughs> well, Android, oh, what's your? Uh, W607. W607. I think we need to fix that elevator and get down to find Mike. Are you able to work on that? On it. <laughs> Thank you, W607. <laughs> All right. You take a look at the elevator. This is the uh, first time I'll do the. I said to keep your D6s because whenever something happens that uh, could go one way, it could go the other. We'll roll a D6. One, two, three is, you know, not ideal for you. Four, five, six is, yep, you kind of get what you're going for. Um, so as you're doing a maintenance check on the elevator, you, uh, talking to the computer workstation uh, interfacing with the, you know, the elevator. Roll a d6. Let's see if you can get four, five, or six to successfully diagnose. Oh, Ooh, a one. <laughs> right. so you're looking at it. Well, I, I, I guess to stay on the ship. You are number one. Yeah, yeah. You're number yeah. one. Oh, I wish. <laughs> you look at it, and you're just not sure what's wrong with it. And it's mm. kind of like. You know, you're looking for a problem. You're lasering in on this and that. It's it's greased. Sure, it's uh, it's been around a while, but it's still obviously it went down. It went up. It's it's working, 
Uh, it's just attached to, you look at the button that activates it here, the button that activates it, there must be a corresponding one down there, maybe if you look at that, but you're not sure if anything's wrong with it, what's wrong with it. Uh, all the data you can get in this room doesn't answer that question. Mm. Well, uh, what's going on back there with the, uh, the commotion? Nice. Uh, sort of leave this room and yeah. see what's up there. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a layout. So here's the showers where you went before. Broken right. track, that's all there is here. There's, you have to go past a bunch of rooms. This is where everyone's rooms are. As you, everyone kind of going together as a team, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's like 10, you know, rooms. One has the door busted off and the bed is basically a couch and it's obviously like a hangout space. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little like, a quarter or boom box there. Uh, and then there's another room uh, that people have like poked two guys or a, a guy and a gal poking their heads out. You haven't seen them before, like looking at the ocean, they see you come and they just quickly close the door. Mm. Uh, and then here's where the noise is coming from. You can see uh, through the door that somebody, Jerome, is holding like, is rubbing his throat and he's sitting down uh, and. Uh, Morgan is like one hand on a skillet, kind of like you know, going and one hand like rubbing his back, kind of like you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you shouldn't have bad mouthed Mike to row, so you should, uh, you know, but now. And then uh, Sonia's saying, "I'm going to have to write you up to Rosa, who is facing you, not listening to her, walking away." And she says, "A write up, a write up for throwing him against the wall, and a commendation for volunteering to look for Mike. Sounds good to me. Excuse me." She just sort of runs into you. And asks you to move. She's muscle shirt, super buff, black hair, bag of ponytail. Clearly uh, a working person, not like uh, Sonia, who's in the maybe mind. never been in line. Yeah. yeah. And a candidate to be a mercenary. But so, Rosa, did, did you find Mike? I'm about to go looking for him. I looked for my entire shift yesterday and didn't find him. Where have you looked, Rosa? The mine. What, where, is, where is there left to look? More mine. I let Rosa know that I have not found anything wrong with the elevator, but maybe if we go down, I can look on the way down. Welcome to join us. More eyes is better. Maybe Kintara's already found them. And she like shoots a look back at Jerome, just like daring him to say something. And he looks for a minute. <laughs> Roll some dice. Four, five, six, he does say something. All right. He just looks away. <laughs> <I'm afraid. laughs> uh, Rosa, I hear you're the last one to see Mike. What were you guys doing? After showering, or not showering, because the shower broke, he came and he said, Rosa, you're the best mining engineer I've ever worked with. And I said, you too. And then it was awkward. And they said, well, good night. And I said, yeah, good night. Is Mike prone to emotional no. sentences such as those? No. It's the most touching thing he's said to me. And how long ago was that exactly? It's the night before last. So he's approaching the 48 hours missing. <clears throat> That's right. And, you and he what? is missing, she says over her shoulder. And, we, and more people need to look for him. She reaches down and grabs a little stuffed animal out of that like room that's a adjoined place and throws it at the door of the two people who are in their rooms. So if people would stop fucking around and making tacos and start looking for him, I would appreciate it. Mm. Have you by any chance uh, uh, looked at the XR-17 to see if Mike has somehow made his way to that ship? The scientist ship? Yes. I would be, Mike be with that weirdo from Corp. You would know better than me. Sonia, unlock the scientist ship. 
I could unlock the airlock on our side, but it's password protected on the other side. Do it. They walk over. He goes in. She puts in her little key card. Which she didn't do the other two times, but this, she needs the key card. Goes in. Controls. Airlocks. It's already unlocked. Mm. Why would that be? Maybe he didn't bother locking it when he went in. It didn't seem like he was in a rush. So anybody could go in? She goes up to it, press the button, one door opens. And it's just like the dock and bay you went through a long hallway. So one door opens, and it goes in, and the door of the ship is still closed. And that has a keypad on the outside. Very nice. You're... You can hear your knock echoing on the other side, but to no avail. Hail him, Rosa instructs Sonia. And she goes into the computer and goes to uh, you know, do a radio talky talk. Comes. Hail Heracles. Hail in the Heracles. Heracles is the name of the geologist? Heracles is the name of the ship. Okay. Uh, he's Dr. Giovanni. I forget his first okay. name. Mm. No answer. Just Can scan. I use my HUD helmet? Yes. To scan for life? <laughs> Absolutely. Put on your HUD helmet. Uh, <laughs> You look at the ship, and does a does the scanner uh, penetrate the metal wall mm. of a ship? Is the question. What do you all think? Darn. You didn't get the upgrade on that scanner. Did you? Yeah, it's such a fancy <laughs> ship. I wouldn't think yeah. so. Yeah. XR seventeen is above the HUD. I am just elated to be on this ship. <laughs> Looking at everything, it, even all to the touch it, yeah. yes, <laughs> it's pristine exterior. The door, the uh, the, the keypad you can see is just immaculate. It's mm. uh, one of these fancy new touch screens. <laughs> everything else in this future is click, click, click. Can I pour a cup of coffee on the keypad and short circuit it? <laughs> Now we're no! There's a W607, yeah. <laughs> Is that all of them? Yeah. You throw the coffee. Do you dive, like, and take the hit or allow it? It's hot coffee. I wouldn't, yeah. It's in a thermos. I will allow it. I won't stop it. All right. But I am saddened. <laughs> but you can fix it afterwards. <laughs> you know these things. Right. Top screen, I don't know. <laughs> uh, zzz, roll the d6. If it's four, five, six, that is enough to open the door. All right. Uh, Two. So it just turn. it just hits it and it just goes off yeah, outside yeah, of the so water. Down to two copies. Of course. Um, W six zero seven. Can you manipulate your way into the ship? This may seem too new. I I don't know, but we can try. I would at least love to get my fingers on this. <laughs> you have, I imagine, like your fingertips you can interface with the side of the little plate that comes out that the key pad is on. And the question is, can you hack it mm. Mm. to make this interesting? I'll say all it takes is time. So you can roll the die, the d6. If and when it is a six, you open the door. But for each roll you have, whether it's a six or not, time passes, and I'm rolling my dice. You want to gamble? I do. What happens when you roll your dice? Things happen. Oh, it's kind of scary on the top of us. All right, let's, let's go for it. Though. Yeah, the old trapper. Is Which reminds me. Of my last roll, you all uh, roll. You 
feel the station that you're on shift suddenly and dramatically. Roll your d6s, try to succeed, four or higher, otherwise you fall. Six. Nice. All right. Good the job. pilot, you have a sixth sense, maybe, right? For when things are shifting, yeah. you yeah, can I, sense it. It's just it, like it, when it, even, shift, even though I've, I've fled from battle, I know what the... <laughs> <laughs> It was your great senses, maybe, that you know, tuned you in when you were supposed to flee. Yeah. But it, you sense it. It's just like, oddly, like a ship taking a, this whole asteroid, like a ship taking a hairpin turn. And you're like, whoop. Everybody else, like, whoosh, you fall down, and you have three items. How many items do you have? Four. Oh, so item number three for you, number one for you, goes sort of flying out of your hands. No! Uh, what are those? My automatic Flash rifle. Oh, no. Oh, automatic, automatic rifle, rifle. skids uh, onto the elevator along with your flashlight. So they're just back in the room behind you. Uh, yeah. Do you want to do that hacking roll now? Yes. You all kind of write yourself. And Sonia and Rosa are standing by, and they like you braced, and they they in unison say, "You get used to it." Mm. All right. Some time passes. Well, you're hacking. What are you two doing? Um, Rosa, what did Jerome say to you? He said that Mike was a drunk and that he was just drunk in the mind, which he's not, and he isn't. So I lifted him up by his neck and slammed him against the new refrigerator hmm. until he took it back. When was the last time you saw Mike drink? 14 months ago. Hmm. He keeps track 400 and something days ago. Uh, Sonia, have you had any conversations with Dr. Uh, Giovanni? Yeah. He came from Colicorp a month ago. <sighs> Something happened on that die roll. Uh, he came from Colicorp a month ago, and he has chow with us pretty regularly. So I've tried to have a conversation with him, but he's basically the most boring guy on the ship, and that's saying something. Sonia <laughs> interjects. And she says, he's not boring. He works for the corporation. He's worked for years to work his way up, and he specializes in these microprocessors and uh, uh, all kinds of strange alloys, materials, uh, things that you can find. He basically specializes in rare, 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 rare metals and substances. I think he's fascinating. Rosa rolls her eyes and begins to walk towards the elevator, which <clears throat> the lights flicker in the elevator begins to descend with your rifle and flashlight on it. Without Rosa? Yes. Yeah. So uh, who controls the elevator? How can it move up and down? Fuck, she says, and slam, <laughs> slams her foot on the door. And Sonia says, in response to yours, it could be Kentaro. Kentaro's down there looking for mm. Mike. It could be both of them at the bottom, uh, pressing for it to go back up. Rosa thinks about whether or not she wants to stop it and make it come back up. Four, five, six, she'll do just that. Yeah. She runs forward. Oh grabs a vac suit that's hanging on a hook and then jumps over the edge and lands, you know, like 15 feet down on the elevator. Hmm. That's quite a drop. Can't you keep rolling to keep hacking? Oh, sure, yes. yes. Uh, something happened, though? Should we wait? Something, that is what happened was the elevator. Okay, the elevator. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah, did, uh... <gasps> Did you see Dr. Giovanni bring anything up the last time he came up from the mine? Roll a d6. Let's see if that's yes or no. Four, five, six. 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 Yeah, I guess Sonia thinks and he's like, yeah, I guess I did. I mean, he always brings a little toolkit with him. Toolbox is the word, Christoph. He brings a little toolbox with him. Uh, but he also had, she looks at your thermos, it was like, kind of like a fancy thermos sealed on both ends, a canister. Mm. Took that into the ship. 
So Dr. Giovanni has to use the elevator every time he does his work on these abandoned tunnels and parts of the mine. Yes. How many times does he go down and up every day? He goes down in the morning. Sometimes he comes up for lunch and then goes back down and then up again for dinner. Sometimes he spends all day down there and just goes down once and up once. And has he been down and up? Has he been down in the mine since Mike has gone missing? Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike went missing two days ago and it was yesterday that he got that canister that he was all excited about. Is there a log? Oh, a log of the goings on the elevator? Uh, no, we're not required to log that. I mean, there is a log of the mine crew that have been going down. And I'm sure Dr. Giovanni keeps his own records for the corporation, but that, yeah, that's shit. Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, dude, that's all three in a row. All right, so you, so you're sort of asking those questions, and then you continue to uh, have your fingers. Uh, before I roll this, there's another <laughs> bunch of uh, screaming from uh, down in the kitchen. Hmm. Uh, it says, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And uh, you hear somebody <laughs> stomping uh, forward, and this squat little guy, you recognize it as one of the two heads that like popped out mm, and in and slammed. Room. He's like, who the hell are you? Where's the Horn of Plenty? And why does that refrigerator not have all the stuff it's supposed to have? It's got cumin. It's got, <laughs> yeah, it's got plenty of cumin. It's got plenty of cumin. It's got plenty of oregano. Uh, uh, yeah, but it doesn't have everything it's supposed to have. And who are you? Uh, uh, who am I? I work here. Who are you? I'm Old Trapper, the pilot. <laughs> oh, great. Great. Was there a little, did anyone go into the refrigerator and find, like, a little, like, square container of, like, it would look like flour or sugar? We don't touch the supplies. I don't like your accusatory tone. Sonia, do you know why we don't have our usual, she just holds up a hand. That's re, you're out of control. Go back, do what you need to do, take what you need to take, and get out of here. And I'm gonna see how he responds to this. Seven, neutral, 12, good, two, bad. Yeah, nine. He looks at her and looks at all of you. And just goes like this. He walks away. She's, she just, Sonia just sighs. I'm sorry for him. He's uh, not good. And then something happens. <laughs> oh. All right. And then something happens. Are you going to get, do you want anything? Yeah, I want. Uh, could I have a chicken and kombucha, please? Do we want to? Uh, we could take a buyer break yeah. now or set a timer to do one in what, two what, minutes. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what time is it? It's oh, about yeah. six o'clock. Okay. So, here we go. Um, I'm down for continuing. Yeah. yeah. All right, too. Keep going. And <laughs> I won't set a timer, but I welcome anyone else to. I lose track of time when I'm doing this, so. <laughs> um, I could not imagine why. <laughs> The thing that happens happens to you, Android. Ooh. As your fingers hacking, interfacing, going through the uh, basically you're That's because you've rolled three twos in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm just imagining like you're going through all the possible six uh, number four number combinations. You have narrowed down that it is a four number combination, so you're just trying to hard crack it. Going through mm. all of them. And then you are taken out of your reverie briefly when your uh, tactile sensors at your ankle sense a uh, strange sensation. And you look down and the cat, the cat is at your feet looking up at you. Do, so I'm super small. Am I just, is it giving me any kind of 
Is it distracting me from what I'm focusing on? That's fascinating. Roll a d6 for super smellery. On this, you have advantage. So even a failure would be better than you think. And a success is even better than usual. So the advantage mm. means in this system. Uh, and I know what that means. You do smell. It's a cat. It has been uh, down in the mine. You can tell that it has, you know, like you know, cadmium dust on it. Uh, and you also smell an unusual, completely alien, foreign scent on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so your entire dog catcher database of all living organisms and all minerals that are related to locations that might like, you know, where an animal has been, where it's going, and stuff like that. Nothing covers what this creature has come in contact with. Mm -hmm. It is not of Earth. Okay. I would like to ask, what, who are we talking to, Sonia? Yeah. Um, if there's any anything that she's familiar with that wouldn't be anywhere else not, except for Epsilon 14. Okay. She thinks, uh, she, she sort of like, at, at this question, she sort of looks down at the cat and looks up at you and says, the cat's from her. It's Morgan's cat. She thinks, she thinks it's, it's not, Strictly regulation, but most mining platforms have pets. You're not going to write me up for having a cat, are you? She's just afraid that it's like some cat problem. So she doesn't know why you're asking. Why, why, do, you, well, why do you ask? Oh, well, this cat seems funny. It, it's, it's not registering in my smell bank. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, That yellow stuff that I found three months ago, uh, well, Mike found it. Mike found it and brought it to me. Mm. But, yeah, I haven't found that. That, they said it was basically like pond scum. Who, who's they that said it was pond scum? Well, I sent a sample of it to call a corporation and they sent back a missive saying disregard you know it's not a contaminant it was earth pond scum that was on the foot of an, uh, uh, an exploratory crew on the surface of the asteroid before they moved to the mining station here well, that wouldn't make sense how would it have survived that's what i'm thinking now you might have any physical contact with this slime <laughs> No, he said he, he said he followed procedure and he's like a collecting spatula and put it in something. <clears throat> How soon after this yellow stuff was discovered did Dr. Giovanni uh, appear mm -hmm. <clears throat> to uh, do his research and studies? Well, I discovered it. I sent it out with the uh, Horde of Plenty and, you know, they either found a base where they could relay it or brought it all the way to Earth, and then Dr. Giovanni came out. But that's for something else. Two months later, I guess. And you know, as a pilot, that if the two are related, that means as soon as the corporation found out about this, they sent out one of their fastest and best ships yeah. to the asteroid. How long does it take to get to Earth from here? Right. Uh, it can be just inside of two months if you are in XR-17. XR-17. Mm-hmm. And Giovanni's been here the whole, Dr. Giovanni's been here the whole time? That whole, th what, last month? Mm-hmm. So I forget, has his ship left the docking station since it arrived here a month ago? It is still here. It's yes. the ship that you're trying to get into, but right, but, but, to... but has it ever left and come back? Great question. Mm. Sonny says, no, no, he's been here docked the whole time. He's, he sleeps in his ship, uh, but the ship stays here. Four. Not better. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your way, you know, two, four, Don't and then, like yeah, it. yeah, it's a nice one. Uh, ooh, okay, nothing, don't worry. Noises never sound good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. 
Prince the Cat uh, uh, moves from between your legs and starts. Oh, the, the cat's name is Prince. Did we know that before? No, it's got a okay. purple collar. Right. Okay. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, so Prince is just kind of loving everybody up. Can I put on my HUD helmet and scan it for this unknown substance? Yes. Yes. So HUD helmet. Get close. Roll a d6. Four, five, six is good. And you will make the substance yes. there. You You're so it. good at rolling dice. <laughs> 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 Every crew needs a mercenary. <laughs> primary skill, right? Yep. Rolling them dice. Uh, particles. So I'm imagining little little lines coming at you. Look at it. See cat. Maybe what color is the visor? It could be clear or red or blue. Yellow. Got this yellow visor sort of over the cat, and uh, little. Like white line comes up with data and it reads it. Yeah. Aluminum, cadmium, cat fur, dandruff. <laughs> uh, ticks, no. Okay. No parasites <laughs> out here. Um, and then it's dot, 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 dot. Unknown substance. Mm. Uh, yeah. Unknown substance. And it says. Biochemical, solid, appears to be, what would it be, scales of a creature. Hmm. Scales of a creature, this, this unknown oh substance. The, on the cat, on the cat. Uh, in its fur, scales of the creature. We need to get down in that mine. <laughs> How far down is the elevator? Oh, wait, I can't go in the room. Does anyone want to check on the elevator? Let's <laughs> see how far down it is. Yeah, no one came back up after Sonya went down. It mustn't have been Kentaro calling it back up. Mm. That much time has passed where it would be able to go down and up. 10, wow. 20, oh my gosh. Yeah. So the elevator is back up? Shouldn't. So if it isn't. It's still down there. We could call it back up. And Cantaro's down there with it. Cantaro and Rosa are down there now. <clears throat> what do you think, Pilot and W six zero seven? I am fine with continuing trying to unlock this ship. If you guys want to go, I agree. Uh, there, there's something in that ship, or something that Dr. Giovanni knows that we need to find out. Just splitting up. <laughs> you want to stick with the captain yes. of the ship. You also are interested in staying in the ship. You're thinking of maybe at going least down calling and going down. All right. So you get one more free roll as you call up the elevator because it takes time it takes to time. come up. Okay. Who gets the free roll? Oh, you're doing it. Uh, get, get that six ginger. I'm doing it. Two, four, six. We're in. Where's that Dr. Giovanni? I want to have a word with him. As the door opens into the beautiful, pristine white, like the ships in uh, Star Wars, you know, just do, 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 lights coming down evenly. I've spaced. never seen the inside of an XR-17. <laughs> a bunch of people, a group of people come from the mass hall. How many people were there? There was so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Uh, the guy who yelled at you, the other girl whose head came out of there. Morgan who was making tacos. The guy who was rubbing his throat for them. And of them, Three, everyone but Jerome, probably, uh, come out to join a search party for Mike. Okay. They're like, this has gone far enough. And they put on their, they go to put on their back suits. From the <laughs> ship. They come from the ship. No, no, no. They come from, from the where they were eating. From yeah, the mess hall. From okay, the mess hall. Okay, okay. Good question. Okay. <clears throat> Clarification. They come from the mess hall and they have decided. It they is get to go into the stuff. elevator then? Yeah. So you've got them with you. Mm hmm. Um, I should maybe write down those names uh, just so I remember who they are uh, on the elevator. And then, as the door opens up, 
the and the crew comes and starts putting on the vacuum suit. They elevated the cats, winding around your legs, uh, and it goes towards your ship where the door was open because they were unloading the refrigerator, right? And it just goes towards your ship a little bit, hisses and freaks out at like the smell of your ship or something, and then bolts again back to the crew's quarters. Mm. So, cat ran away from your ship. Your door is open. You have a crew with you to go to the elevator. Have our, has our door always been open to our ship? The people who unloaded the refrigerator left it open. Left it open. So Morgan, Re, and who's the third person with me? Morgan, Re, and you ask what uh, her name is. She was the girl in the room with that guy who was yeah. Uh, you. She's, she's Reeve. Uh, tall, sort of sneering, and she says, Dana. Okay, Dana. So where's Sonia? Yeah. I'm the head driller, she says. She sits up and... Do any of you have weapons? Yeah, there was one other person who isn't going with you who's back with three. Tiny little guy who told Rosa to calm down. Weapons. Do any of them have weapons? That's quite a question. Give me one sec. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Ree's the one who's staying, no, the fellow who had his, Jerome, Jerome staying, staying back. And they all look at each other and they, like, pick up, there's a crate full of seven of these laser torches. It's mm -hmm. like a torch that shoots out a blinding laser, a okay. blue beam, and, and they shrug. That's their weapon, is their, you know, mining lasers. Well, that will have to do. So, let me back up. You said yeah. the, the cat uh, went to our ship or to the XR-17? As you were seeing the XR-17 open up, the cat like started walking away from you towards your ship, and then it freaked out. All right. We might want to check the manifest of our ship. Yeah. So now you got all kinds of options. Are you still going yeah, down right? the elevator with them, or do you want to check out the science <laughs> ship, the XR-17, or your ship? They're all kind of promising leads at this point. After the door opens, what does the cat do? It just goes over to our ship and then freaks out and runs away. That's yep. it. Doesn't it try and go into the, the ship or doesn't make any kind of surprise moves from that door opening. When your door opens is when it's kind of like, yeah, I'm tired of these human beings. And it goes towards to check out your other ship. And okay. that's when it pauses, hackles, go up, hisses, runs. Interesting. Yeah. We haven't seen the cat do that at all since we've been out. It's been very... It freaked awful. out when it first came out the elevator. Yeah. Yeah. It came up, the elevator was moving on its own. It came off, freaked out right away. Okay. Cool. I will continue with them into the mine. We will take the other way down. I want to retrieve my rifle. Excellent. So the rifle's there because it came back up. It's still on. It's still on the other way. There's okay. a flashlight okay. there too if you want to Cool, sure, it. yeah. I'd love to have my flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your rifle. So who's, who's going down with you again? Morgan, Ree, and Dana. Okay. So where's Jerome staying up? Jerome's hanging back with his sword. Sonia, down. what's Sonia doing? <laughs> Sonia is up here with you looking at the medical ship and okay we'll now decide what she's interested in one is the medical ship two is your ship three is the elevator she's like i want to i want to go in there too i want to talk to dr giovanni yeah, yeah. that's what i want to do uh, he's up to something i know show, i do want to check that out eventually <laughs> something's going on in that mine That. You Dana go down. <laughs> that takes time. Long screeching, <laughs> echoing above, like beyond the uh, elevator footprint. There are like tubes, as I said, sucking up ore, like vacuuming up ore that's being mined uh, for above. So that's the kind of scene as you all go down. Uh, Re and Dana, like busying their noses and blinking as they put on their suits. They they seem like really jacked, but also kind of out of it. <laughs> and uh, mm. and then Morgan's also with you, right? Yeah. Morgan suits up and then replaces 
her hard hat with a new purpose. Smell of taco is brittle on her breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that crew. You're going into the ship. Clink, 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 clink. Uh, lights shine. You come to a T. It seems to have like a circular central captain's area. You can tell by the curved hallway. You can't quite see it yet. Again, 2001 Space Odyssey-esque. Uh, to the right, you can see the washroom. The door is not only open, but <laughs> busted off. It's not hinges, but it's like a Z door. It's busted off. Uh, the mm. sink has been torn out of the wall. Mm. The shower head gone. So the bathroom's a mess. And to the left, you can see signage saying that there's the uh, laboratory and the Captain E. Drivey Station. The what? The Captain E. Drivey Station. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I find it weird that all the bathrooms are broken. Yeah, that, that is a strange coincidence. Um, did uh, Dr. Giovanni ever visit the bathroom in the, uh, in the main area of the... Uh... So that's a funny question, but Sonia... Sonia nods and she looks quizzically at the busted stuff in his ship bathroom. He's like, he preferred to use his own bathroom. But uh, one night when Morgan was trying to make up for the lack of spices and use the old protein cubes, he did end up having to use our bathroom in an emergency. <laughs> she looks quizzically and says, so this must be recent. Sure, he went to the bathroom in the past week. When was the last time you saw Dr. Giovanni? Yeah. Like I said, it was yesterday. He yeah. was all excited. His toolkit had this canister with him, said something about made a discovery into the ship. So, do you go into the bathroom and inspect that or go into the uh... Laboratory. That's the question. The yeah. lavatory or the laboratory? <laughs> <laughs> well, cats don't like water, from what I'm familiar with yeah. the lines. Check out. <laughs> I just yeah. th think that there's a coincidence, you know, th that there's a connection between this, uh, this, uh, alleged pond scum and why Giovanni's there and the laboratory may give us the answer to that. So I go to the lab laboratory. There you see. Okay. Go on. Yes. You were going to split up? I was going to. Excellent. No, you, to <laughs> you can, as you approach the laboratory, you see the silhouette of a man, probably the doctor in the lab coat, standing over something and you call back if you want, you can call back so you know, I think I found the doctor. And then you can decide, do you want to go to the lavatory or the lavatory? Let's go to the doctor. Yeah. yeah. You, Sonia, uh, a whole trapper, <laughs> go towards. Uh, and I'm imagining like there's like a viewing screen, like you'd have for a two way mirror in an interrogation chamber, but it's not a, it's just a window. And then a door that you'd use to open to go into the lab. So he's kind of like behind a glass. But he's at a table, and you can see next to him, like she said, he's got a, this is where I take my notes, like a memo tape recorder. Uh, and he's at a microscope and with his back to you, and he's got some, like, scientific gear around his neck. He's looking down into it. Dr. Giovanni, I presume. He pauses at his work and then continues, ignoring you. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dr. Giovanni? Not looking, he goes and his hand slaps the uh, open door button and then the door to the lab opens, sort of inviting you in and then he goes to continue looking at his specimen. Follow in. So you go into the lab with him, uh, has his back to you, and then he stands up, looks towards you, a big smile. And he starts, tears coming out of his eyes, but they are bioluminescent and yellow tears coming out of his eyes. And he smiles, a wide, yellow, glowing smile. And he lifts his head and you can see uh, opening in his throat. 
out of which like egg yolk, but it's yellow goo just starts pouring out of an opening and he lifts up a scalpel and runs towards you. Okay, her horn gun comes out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> First, uh, roll a d6 to uh, dodge the scalpel. Okay. One, two, three, as it hits you. Four, five, six, you're able to get it. He goes behind you, onto the thing, microscope. He goes towards you. <laughs> Take out your harpoon gun. And then again, roll a d6. Four, five, six, you hit him. One, two, three, and the harpoon goes wide. Oh! Oh, darn it. <laughs> it hits a. Uh, what does it hit in a laboratory? The. Specimen bottle yeah. in a cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of glass shatters. What do you do? Um, what do you have in your inventory? It starts to, he starts to write himself and again, lift the scalpel, smiling, <laughs> tears coming out of both side, dark sides of his eyes. I guess I just try and grab his arms. Uh, nice to sort of hold him in place. Yes. All right. You're strong. You're an android. Yeah, you're an android. <laughs> yeah. Roll d6. It's with disadvantage. Yes. I wanted to say that after you did the oh. roll. So disadvantage means if it's a success, it's not as good as you think. And if it's a failure, it's really bad. A six, as good as you could get, but... He's super strong, oh, and sure. despite your uh, holding his arms in place, which would usually, right, the success would mean you're pinning him in place, it only slows them, and he is able to hit only one person, you, because you've sort of got his arms, so he goes in to scalpel you, roll one more time, this time to dodge the scalpeling. All right. Okay. So you're able to move his arms sort of out of the way, but you're just wrestling each other. You with your android strength, and him with this strange super strength. And as you know, like flexes his muscles to do this, you see his fingernails start to. I'm really into body horror, so uh, you know, if I go too far, just tell me, you know, I'll dial it back. But his fingernails start to like come off, and there's yellow goo coming out from under his fingertips. Is it like? Is it acidic? Is it? Oh yeah, is it burning, is it hurting, hurting me at it's all? It's not sizzling on you. It hasn't. Well, that's actually an excellent question. Whether uh, what's it do to you? Give me one. Oh, what, what what does coffee do to this? <laughs> oh, I have coffee. What is that <laughs> uh, it hasn't yeah. dropped onto you, but if you keep struggling like this, if you keep holding onto his arms, it will. It's up to you whether you want to risk getting the goo dripped on. I don't know that, so I'm just holding on. All right. So his fingers, you can see the goo dripping towards you, and then you throw coffee under yeah. the back of him. Uh, I suppose he would be scalded, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, because that thermos, man. I'm <laughs> <laughs> down to one cup. Yeah. What would you, what, I mean, what would you want it to do? What would co- a scalding helping of coffee on your back usually do to somebody? Well, I would want it to. Well, usually it would cause them to, you know, let let go. Yes. But it, for him, I would look, want a, a chemical reaction with this yellow ooze, so it's, it go. starts going inward rather than outward and destroying the <laughs> internal organs. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> he does rear back away from you, so okay. you can let his arm go if you want. Perfect. Because um, he's not threatening. The brown stain on his white smock, you know, spreads, and uh, and then... There's a swell, it's like, you know, you see the stain sink in, and then there's a swell, like he, he's, he's popped. And the brown stain turns yellow. Oh, no. And there's just a mass of yellow goo coming out of his back where you scalded. Yeah, yeah. All right, is he melting into the floor now? Or? <laughs> he's starting to, right, he, as a torso, but then he just flops towards both of you. <laughs> he has two mouths, one here and one here. He just opens them and it's like, you know, sticking together. What do you do? How close are we to the door? How close is he to the door? You're mm. all, I was, good question. I was envisioning kind of like a door here that's now open. Here's where that window was. Here's the room. Here's where he was on his microscope. And then you're all basically right here. And so okay. she's horrified standing there. <laughs> I would like to shove or push uh, Doctor and then grab them or shuffle them out of the door and then close the door and try and lock it. I'll say you can do all of that, but the risk is getting goo on you. 
Okay. I'll so, for my humans. <laughs> if you can get four, five, six, you're not gooey. But one, two, three. Yes. All right. He falls back. His torso totally just completely falls off of his body. <laughs> and there's a segment here where it's like, on the outside, it looks just like a person's torso, but in the middle, it's like he's just full of marmalade, that yellow goo marmalade, which starts spilling, and you see his slumping like side on the table, and he's just smiling, watching at you as you close the door, and then through the window, you see the goo like tentacle out and like bring him back upright. Oh my god. And he starts going towards the door with his scalpel in hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, so lock the door with my fingers. Nice. Uh, can you lock it from this side yeah. in a way that he couldn't open? That's the question. I guess you have your... There's uh, got to be a file camp box. cabinet somewhere we can put it, push in front of the door. Always convenient. <laughs> hallway. You've come out of there where there would be all kind of gear and equipment yeah. kind of in there. But out in this hallway, it goes on further to his bedroom where there would be furniture that you could grab it and take some time. He's coming, you go to lock it. If you can get a six, definitely, you can lock it. A three. So you're going to lock it, you're staying by the door. Uh, you're go, what are you doing? He's coming towards the door. I'm, I'm, I'm fleeing from the battle. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I've heard that he recoils from skull tattoos. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I want to show him my skull tattoo. On the top of your head. <laughs> he goes to, through the crack of the door, he sees the skull tattoo and smiles wider, and his own flesh begins to slough off around his eyes and mouth oh. to reveal a skull like visage. Oh, oh I guess yeah. that didn't work so well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to think of something else here. Uh, we'll sacrifice Sonia. Oh, my <laughs> tripper! <laughs> so, you no. Know, uh, what? So, what? 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 So I'm just saying, <laughs> she's just stammering. Uh, she's not uh, doing too well with this. She shakes her head to try and uh, seven neutral, twelve good, two bad. Uh, five, not great. Oh, what? She's, she, not she's just well. backing up down the hallway back towards the entrance. We should close the airlock. We can close it. She's oh, yeah. running away to lock the door to this ship that you're in. Ooh. So she's left and locked us in with this she's, guy? She's going to do that. She's okay. just a bit ahead of you. And what do you do as he goes to open the door? His skull-like face is coming in. Uh, I start walking towards the bathroom. Nice. You go towards the bathroom. Sina runs past you out towards the mining station. The, the doctor comes through. He's, you're kind of in the area now. They've both gone past you. He's going to try to scalp you again. Make another D6 roll. No, no, here we go. <laughs> two. Oh, no. A scalpel to your body. So these two slots, 10 and 9, instead of having stuff in them, they're going to have injuries. And okay. let's come up with what scalpel injuries okay, are. Yeah, laceration. Yeah, yeah. Deep laceration. Yes. Well, I mean, scalpels are only about an inch and a half. Yeah, yeah, that true. Wouldn't true. Injure anything. What if it hits huh? a special no, spot? Yeah, it's Unless it hits a, yeah, an artery. Uh, okay, uh, well, I'll just put the uh, scalpel wound. <laughs> All right, okay. Scalpel wound takes up the nine. I and then, like and shock. Here. How about in number 10 is just shock? Okay. That's nice. Yeah, we That's can nice. worry about what to do about those later. <laughs> uh, if all 10 of those get filled up, you die. Lovely. All no. ten of these yeah. in my inventory. Yeah. Oh. So that attack gave you two. Well, I can I can throw the coffee away, and then that'll give me another empty space. If a wound were to like creep up to here, you'd have to drop that, and you'd take the injury. It's double bad. Oh. So it's okay. Like there. All right. Uh, but it's your turn. <laughs> you just got stamped. The goo yeah. is there. Yeah. Uh, you'd probably so, be getting some goo on you. Wouldn't yeah, you? I, I would be getting some goo on yeah. me. So I'm. Uh, uh, I'm stronger than Dr. Uh, G, so I, I, I push him down, and I, I go to meet up with Sonia. Nice, but he's got the super strength, so roll for it. If you can get four, five, six. It is so... Uh, no! You go, to, you go to push him back, and your hands just go through. Go right into, yeah. oh. into the goo. You reel back. Uh, oh, no. Dripping with goo. Yes. And, and, yeah, I... 
what am I? Do you you is, can is my flesh gone now or what? You can roll to scrape it off. All right. Let's All see. Right. Uh, it's with disadvantage because okay, there's so much goo. So that means a success. You get some of most of it. Okay. All right. You get most of it off. <laughs> he just smiles at you. Uh, yeah. Okay. What? You're, you're, it doesn't burn. It isn't acidic. It does. Okay. It is clingy right. and sticky. Uh, you as you grab it off, you see it's got like it leaves little one line on it, like a gooey, gooey All right. glue. So here's what I do now. Uh, I I throw my remaining cup of coffee in his face. All right. And, and then I meet up with uh, the android in the bathroom. See what is going on there. You scratch off his coffee. He falls back, and then both of you are in the bathroom. In the bathroom, you see uh, that some super strong human has <laughs> twisted sure. the uh, yeah. shower off uh, and pulled the sink out of place and knotted knotted the metal pipes so that no water comes through. <laughs> All right, so that's it. That, that's what the bathroom shows. Okay. You look back and his head is melted off now. It's just goo on his shoulders. Oh, this might be weird. I would like to shoot a nail gun at the knotted tubing. A knotted plumbing. Uh, to get the water. Yes, to, come to get loose. the water. Yeah. All right. Roll. Well, mm, would it happen? Yeah. Roll a d6. One, two, three. I can have it. Four, five, six. Yes. A one. <laughs> that means that your nail gun, give it one strike. And once you get three strikes, you're all out of nails. Cool. That sucks. Okay. Yeah. Three nails. <laughs> but, but if you succeed, this is where the system's kind of goofy. If you succeed, you don't lose ammo. So as long as you're succeeding, you have infinite ammo. If you mm. miss, your ammo goes down. Uh, okay. All right, that happened. Uh, it starts coming towards you, but it is by now. The, the coffee has affected it, and its head's gone, and its torso is gone. So mostly it's just two arms coming out of like legs and a belly uh, that are coming at you, still swinging wildly with the scalpel. Let's see which one of you two would get hit. Evens? Odds. Evens. It goes at you with the, this leg arm thing, comes at you with the scalpel, and roll a d6 to dodge. Yes. Yes. He doesn't have eyes anymore. You're able to just go like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, Sonia uh, screams from the computer terminal in the other room, Get out of there! Get out of there! I'm locking the door! William, finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a confirmation, shove and go. <laughs> I'm right behind you. I don't think she's joking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? All right. Both come through. So we meet up with Sonia, yeah. and we're, uh, she's going to lock it. Yeah. You yeah, see the thing wobbling towards, and then the door closes and seals it off. The elevator <laughs> lands at the bottom of the shaft. So I have my rifle back. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. There you are at the bottom of the shaft. Uh, it's the mine entrance. Uh, you see that there's an airlock in front of you, like this area is sealed off. It's connected to everything up top and you know well sealed against the vacuum of space that you need to put on back suit to go forward. Yeah. Um, there are automated drills that sort of go through the walls and the tubes we've been talking about sending ore up. Uh, and they're, you know, pumping sorted up above. No, I suppose well, I shouldn't have sh shaken that. Yeah, no, oh. you don't want to shake that. All right. Here, Can you have the, yeah, you have the roll of paper towels oh, it's, there. It's leaking. It's leaking yeah. All right. I've done the same thing with kombucha. I know, yeah, right? I just take it in the kitchen. You want to all get situated? Yeah. I didn't realize it was so potent. Oh, sometimes it does. <laughs> yeah, it's not so fizzy like mine. Challenge. You're in the mine. They open the airlock. You've got you and your crew go forward into a mine tunnel where the shaft kind of narrows slightly. And there are thin veins of ore shining. And you can see that's where the automated drills are kind of like screwed into the wall to 
drill into. Uh, these black rock uh, in this asteroid, mostly excavated. Um, yeah, the people, all the people with you just go to start searching and looking through. They like, they know the mine pretty well, so um, I'm pretty sure Rosa already searched here earlier today, they say, don't go there. Mm -hmm. They start looking through the walls and like hugging close to the walls to feel their way through because it's all black. It's you get the sense that they have to sort of move by feel. They all have flashlights on their backs and mm. you do too. Um, and that's where you are. You can spend time searching with them or follow one of them. They're kind of splitting up. Do I hear anything? Ooh. Any sort of sounds or any strange smells? Are my senses being alerted? Sure. Roll a d6. Six. Oh, that's the one. All right. Yes, you do. You hear something. Um, did you make up those rules as well? Good question. This is the one thing I did not make. This is the adventure. Ypsilon 14. It's by... Um, his name's on here. Anyway, it's for some, a game called Mothership, which is not what we're playing. Okay. Uh, that's it. D.G. Chapman. D.G. Chapman. Great writer. Okay. Um, you hear a crackle. A machine crackle with the computer. You're able to follow it, but it takes some time. You find a crack in the wall that it seems to be echoing out of. It. So the hum and buzz of the machine at work. Mm -hmm. If you spend 10 minutes, you can go that way. Right now, you're kind of over there while the other three are in different areas of the line searching. Yes, I definitely want to check out this humming sound. Yeah. Crackling, crackling sound. Crackling, crackling. Okay. Second. Um. You move through, quiet it is here. Until the crackling is the only, you know, all the sound of them. My fades away. Just come into a chamber. After like 10 minutes of walking through, it's a sort of spherical chamber, and the black rock here has like organic whirls in it. Uh, and there is, it is lit by a yellow glow, by a pool bioluminescent goo, mm. yellow goo, it's sort of there, and it's in chambers, it's like in the wall, and there's a big pool of it in the floor, like in a caldera, I'm thinking of the scene from uh, Elephant Graveyard, Lion King, where in the, they're in the, like the birdie boiler. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. One of those, but full of yellow goo. Um, <laughs> not the birdie. And then there's a little workstation set up by it, and that's what's crackling away. And there's like a basically a wire going from it into the yellow goo puddle, uh, and there's like a scrap out of paper and a little uh, log by the computer workstation there. And there is best of all uh, a empty fleshy pod in the wall, split by a vertical gash, uh, from which leaks uh, embryonic pus. Yeah. Big enough for like a you know, ten foot tall thing to go inside. Hmm. Definitely want to check out the workstation. See what's going on there. Not the embryonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd stay, stay clear of there. I mean, but I don't know what happened to you guys. I don't know that yeah. the yellow goo is anything suspicious besides it being yellow goo. <laughs> Deep within. Well, but you, you, yeah, you, you, you have found out though that. Sonia, you know, they, they discovered this yellow stuff, right? That yes. they yeah. thought was pond scum. Yeah, I knew about the pond scum. Yeah. 
the it's a small workstation. There's scientific equipment, beakers, that sort of thing, and uh, pH tests, and you know, future pH tests that test things other than pH. I don't know. And uh, uh, measurement instruments. Again, there's the one thing roping into the yellow goo, and there is another thing uh, going up to the pod. And all of this looks to have been hastily set up recently. Yes. And the beakers aren't engraved with Dr. G or anything. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the, Kala the, log, the log does say Heracles, his ship on it, and okay. Dr. Giovanni definitely Kalakorp at the top. Kalakorp yep. Manor. Yep. Uh, oh, and right. it's got, it's just a log of his uh, comings and goings on the front page, like when he goes down, when he comes up, what he's found. Mostly empty, mostly empty, mostly empty. And then there is a cassette tape left there, but no player that was back mm, oh yeah that was back next to him the cassette tape has a label on it it's a white cassette with a printed label that says dr e giovanni log hrcls heracles uh exo 119 a scanner is sending readings from the pod like a fleshy pod data that's coming into that is attached to a satellite that's go beaming out to the Heracles. Mm. And on the scrap of paper on the desk is just a four digit code. 0389. Um, okay, can I use my HUD helmet again? Scan the embryonic pod? All right. There's a match. For the inside of the embryonic pod, there are scales that match the scales that you found on the cat. The goo, not the same thing. Yellow goo is not the same as the mm. scales that were on the cat. Different. That's what you glean from your HUD kind of readout. Again, it, it right, registers the goo as alien substance. Don't know what the hell this is. Not found in databanks. Uh, uh, dot, 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 question mark, biological leavings of scales that's like the hypothesis that it's reading to you and then with the pod itself you know, uh, it says biochemical in nature the living, uh, apparently living pulsating. saving okay um yeah i want to keep my hud helmet on my automatic rifle at the ready and is there a trail coming from the pod to anywhere else all right your HUD helmet uh, in this lighting and space sort of is adjusting, and we'll say it's a little smart, right? Uh, and it flips through like night vision, thermo, all mm -hmm. those different things, and it lands on a spectral infrared reader mm -hmm. that registers coming from the pod and back again, many sets of very large three-toed footprints. Okay. Yeah. And you see those go back out the crack that you came from and back in. Follow the prints. Takes time to get back to that mind chamber where you started. You're in full commando mode. <gasps> Loving this. All right. Un momentito. You hear uh, The lights shutter, doo -doo -doo -doo. the elevator, which you're like in that room now, having just closed the door, the elevator starts going down on its own. Okay, so now it's back to them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, elevator's going down. Sonia, uh, let's go down. You can show me where we need to go. You familiarize. Do you need a vac suit to survive in space? The answer is no. You're an android. No. Oh. Do you want to jump onto that thing? The elevator is going down. How far is it? At this point, it's five feet, six, five feet, yeah, eight, five seven feet. feet. You jump onto it. Yeah. <laughs> Sonia has a star. Oh, God. <laughs> so is this when it's going down with me? Or did it already come After. back and so it's going back down, down? It's gone up, and now it's going back down on its own, and you're coming back from Podville. Yep, yep. Yep. Okay. In this, you've just escaped the science ship. The okay. elevator's going down on its own. Uh, W607 jumped onto it. Sonia, let's see, seven, neutral, 12, good, too bad. Sonia, eight, jumps down too after a little hesitation. Do you wanna, oh, but uh, she grabs a vac suit before she does, because she needs that to survive. Do you wanna join them 
on this elevator that's going down. Um, there's that. There's going back to the science ship. There's going to your ship. Yeah, no, I, I think I want to go back to my ship. Okay. So I don't want to go back to the science ship because I don't know what. Uh, I, I don't have the you know my, the harpoon gun failed me before, so <laughs> I don't know what the. Uh... I could always, could always if you did get a four five six, it would succeed. Okay. The ship's going down. You guys bid each other farewell. Yeah. <clears throat> Find Mike. Do you return to your ship? It uh, goes into the cargo bay where um, Morgan scrapped, scuffed the floor a little bit before while loading that big old refrigerator thing onto one of their hover pallets. Okay. Uh, that's, that's your maybe. You don't like that. Uh, Looking around, the cat is not here. Uh, it ran away, remember. Looking for anything out of the ordinary, or do you have any particular hypothesis as you're going to your ship? Well, has the ore been loaded on my ship yet? Or uh... Good question. Everybody's been so busy with this business about Mike that none of the loaders have been doing their job on your ship. Mm -hmm. you take it on yourself to do so. Pardon me? You could take it on yourself to do so. Okay. Um, so is the cargo bay empty um, because they've unloaded all the cargo that was destined for? Yes. Um, this We're unloaded but not loaded. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Good for them, bad for us. Um, so um, while they were unloading the cargo, did anything? happened to sneak onto our ship. Right. You do, you'll have to kind of do a look around the ship and go to the past the crew course. The sink and shower have been destroyed on your ship. There's a pattern here. Some powerful thing uh, has ripped it. Shut it on and scratch it. Is there a trail of yellow goo anywhere? Cool. Question. No goo. No goo. You thoroughly there, take some time to look. Are Start there on. scales anywhere? Well, roll a d6. All right. You heard from, uh, from, about these scales, so right. you're curious about whether there are any. Yeah, well, we heard earlier we were, uh, when the cat came up, uh, there are scales of a creature. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So you look in the bathroom where the pipes on your ship, the Hunset, have been broken now and knotted up. And sure enough, mm. upon those pipes, you find the same minuscule scales that were in the cat's fur. And when you look at them, they catch the light in a very odd, sort of iridescent way. Sorry. And it's, you know, it's like looking at scales made of ice, you know, they're translucent. Ooh. Right. So they're back on our ship? Yes, that's on okay. our ship. Okay. So our pipes are now twisted. Our, our bathroom is destroyed. The pipes are twisted. Um, Who would have done that, though? So it was Morgan and Jerome So, well, I mean, when we were, so there was that commotion that we went back to see that somebody could have slipped on or, um, you know, or Morgan could be the culprit. Um, where is, uh -oh. is Morgan down with uh, Yep. Okay. Down with Okay, so I, well I, I, I observed the bathroom, um, and so I, I want to search the ship to see what else has been done to my ship. So, so you uh, take some time. Let's roll some time dice here. 
I'll go, go to the brig to see you know if any any of the uh, instruments have been tampered with. Oh my God, it's already Excellent. almost seven. What the heck? Right. <laughs> Woo! You go to the brig. You do a thorough search of your ship over the 10 minute. Like, I give you the benefit of the doubt. You learn everything there is to learn, okay? I'm not holding anything back. Something did come on. This scaly thing busted up your laboratory. And then it or someone or something else looked at your ship logs and sort of looked through, uh, basically did a diagnostic on your ship. Okay. But didn't alter anything. And then left. Whatever it is, you know, there's no sign of it now. I've thoroughly determined that. No trail of scales or any any yellow goop. Yes, you're looking for the scales. I love imagining an old trapper just like <laughs> old fashioned like ear to the ground. <laughs> the scales, they seem to have come on through all the places I've named, the cargo bay, to the bathroom to destroy it. There are scale residue on your computer. So this scaly thing was doing a diagnosis of your ship. And then it left. Meanwhile, on the elevator. Evens, it's you. So, so you're going back down the elevator? Yes. Okay. Yep. We're going down up the top. I should person. grab like a canteen or something. Yeah. I was well, thinking about like how to jump. Well, you have your nail gun with you, right? Roll a D10. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nine. Nine. Nice. Where's that? Your right foot. Sonia's right foot disappears uh, along <laughs> with most of her. So it's just like she's standing there. And she, whoa, she falls over and you look and there's just a perfectly clean cut through the bone and tissue and everything. Oh my gosh. And it looks like withered on the end. And uh, uh, that happened. Uh, she's that standing, happened. looking around, looking up in total shock sort of going white as a sheet, what do you do? As you're on the elevator going down, you and her in the dark. That, oh, it's, it, it, it's, the elevator is dark. Okay. Did, did, did you know that? Elevators are dark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I do have a flashlight. Um, here's Sonia. Moonshine for human pain. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs it just out of her hand like a baby grasping at a bottle and holds it up and then I'm pour it on my leg. <laughs> the same happens to her left hand. <laughs> and the oh bottle God. drops out of her hand. No, not and she, her eyes just start going focused and unfocused. She looks up at you and this time you heard a little sound when it happened. Mm. In her. In her From body, there. or that like general area. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Gross. What do you do? Ah. Uh, wow. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> um. You crawl up the wall out of the elevator. <laughs> How They're far like are we from tables. the top? Are we? Are we pretty? I mean, I've seen it down there. So how far are we from the bottom? Yeah, you've been them down. You can guesstimate how far away the bottom is, right? How big is a freight elevator mine shaft that takes 10 minutes to go down? Can anyone give me a good estimate mm. of that? Ten minutes? Uh, yeah. Boy. I'd say it. a mile. Yeah. Yeah. Mile. yeah. All right. Let's do percentage of a mile using the tens. You should have two. Mm. Oh, there it is. Um, this is how far it is from the bottom. 81% uh, of the way from the bottom. So wow, we've gone that. nowhere. Twenty percent of the of the of a mile from the top now. Oh, so and, 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 and Sonia's lost two of her limbs in that twenty percent. Oh my god! So as you take the time to uh, think about that, uh, her other hand, and this time you hear right, you're kind of cued for it. You hear, oh my god! And you see the same thing. It's just sort of 
and then there's it's white and puckered as though the was sucked out of it. So there's no blood coming out, gushing exactly. out. Exactly. There is okay. no blood left behind. So I'm just, I'm just looking around, seeing if there's anything obscure about the <laughs> elevator shaft, mm. and if there's any holes or anything popping out. Or, or... D6. Oh. All right. You look around, nothing, nothing except you and Sonya, and you look down at Sonya, and oddly, on her torso, there appears to be the depression of a giant three-toed foot, as though there were an invisible giant foot pinning her down. Oh my gosh! And then <laughs> her right arm disappears. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. Well, I'm a Sonya, I think, android. Yeah. Sorry, Sonia. My, my condolences. <laughs> she swings weakly with the bottle, <laughs> at the, and you hear it clink as it hits okay. against an invisible leg. <laughs> so take my arm and just right above her body, just swipe. Nice. And see if I hit anything. It's trying to harm it or move it or just tell harm it. There. Oh, for sure. Harm Arms it. are lo <laughs> we're yeah. losing things here. Right. <laughs> Murder the thing. That's good. All right. Well, you'll definitely run into this scaly surface of you know something as like wide as my uh, uh, thigh. Uh, the question is: Is it enough to with all of it? I'm really like a worrying. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Will it hurt it? Roll well, a uh, d6. No, wait, wait, wait. The uh, four, five, six, you hurt it. But one, two, three, it hurts you. Mm. It's not going to like get in hand. It's not going to like. Yeah. No. Oh. Now, it's not one, though. <laughs> well, Android is metal, isn't it? I mean, you can't hurt it. You remember how the super strength gave him two mm -hmm. injuries? Yes. You take this many injuries. Oh! One, two, three, four, and let's see what happens. Your right hand is gone, so missing right hand. Oh my god. <laughs> W607, wow. I'm... And then what are some other shocks or, you know, problems? Blood loss, maybe? Or Do what? androids have one? Uh, like a valve? Like yeah. a valve goes off? Or mm -hmm. it unplugs? Mm -hmm. Like some shock? Yes. Yes. Okay. So note that in number nine. Source code error for number eight. Mm. Move to number seven. Fluid loss. They still like that. So yeah. Some kind of fluid. Okay. So you tried to whack it, uh, and it chomped off your arm or uh, your hand in retaliation. Sure. Oh, good. All right, you still have one good arm. You might start to think about who your favorite non-player character is. <laughs> All right, back to uh, the bottom of the mine. You can hear the elevators coming down now as you come out into the mine area. So I'm still following the scales with my rifle. Okay, okay. Yes. You come out to the big area where people are going, Mike, Mike, Mike. Could they have found something? Maybe this is nice. Uh, the scales uh, lead pretty much in one direct path, and you can tell it's straight from that hole in the wall where the fleshy pod was, its house maybe, toward the elevator. You go there, you can hear the elevator rattling down, uh, you can see the footprints, and you look up and they, the footprints lead to the elevator, and they also, like flashlight illumines the walls and then it takes your hut a minute to catch up, are on the walls. So it appears mm. it can walk up. Okay. I shout to everyone, uh, get your, get your weapons at the ready. <laughs> They're the little lasers. <laughs> can those lasers hurt things or is it just? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, Dana calls back, weapons? What for? Did you find Mike? Did not find Mike. Found a found a uh, possible possible threat to the ship and to the asteroid. Elevator's coming down. Get over here now. 
they all kind of you hear them mumbling and all that stuff. Isn't Kentaro supposed to be there? Did you find Kentaro? Somebody got Morgan calls back. <laughs> Nobody's fear. been found. The elevator's coming down. We need to see who's on it. Just move. They all <laughs> come towards you. You see their headlamps. And the three of them are there with you. Just their little welders at the ready. Wow. You've got the tension with it now. <laughs> <laughs> How many more turns with this and the monster will it be before you arrive where the cat yeah, is? Yeah, seriously. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, this gosh. many more. This okay. many more. Oh, God. So uh, let's, let's do surviving. another one. Do you do anything else to the monster? <laughs> or... Uh, monster's a harsh word. The creature. <laughs> flashlight? <laughs> Well, just a, 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 just put a flashlight towards it. You know, it's dark in there. Yeah, it must yeah. must be afraid of light. You uh, flash the water or flash the flashlight at it, uh, and you you hear a response. Like you sort of shine it, and it illumines nothing. It, it seems as though there's nothing there, but you hear a clicking sound in response. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you see the footprint uh, on top of, of uh, is it Sonia? Yeah, Sonia, Sonia, yeah. Sort of twitch. And then it's, her uh, head is severed from it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, God. That's terrible to watch. <laughs> that is so, awful. So that, 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 <laughs> so, so is, that, is that Sonia's head? Yeah. yeah. Bye -bye, Sonia. So her last expression, which was just, she heard the clicking too, so she was like, and then head kind of rolls a little bit with that expression on it. You know. Oof, duh. Uh, three more rounds, and you're back on the ship, so you hear the screeching of the <laughs> elevator coming from below. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I follow the trail of the scales of directly off the ship. Off the yeah. ship? Yeah. You find uh, they lead to a wall. They seem to go up the wall away from where you can easily track them, but there are more on the ground leading this way and that way and this, and most of all, to and from the elevator. Uh, it's been moving around. Yeah. Does it also go back to the mess area of, of the, uh, the mess station? Area. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Fresh scales back to there. And what about to the... And in the mess area, you look at the food area where, you know, Jerome was. He's no longer there. Yeah. You see the, the door with Jerome on it is closed. All the, some of the doors are open, like all the people who have gone, but Jerome's is closed. What about the shower, the lavatories? Did it go into that area? It avoided the showers. Was there a trail of scales to the uh, XR-17? No. The Heracles? Hmm. Gonna do anything else? We're back to you. Yeah. So this <laughs> ah. Out of there. Um, just keep with the flashlight. That seems to be fine to me. So I'm just leaving the flashlight yes. at it. Yep. Just trying to get the scare it up or out. Two we've already done. Do four. Arm gone. Who's arm? Sonia's. She's got the it's, torso, uh, leg. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just got a let's do the whole thing. torso and leg right now. And then uh, back to you. Everyone's got their things at the ready. They're looking up at the quickly approaching elevator. They say, well, what, what are we supposed to do, Morgan? I have found uh, the Dr. G's workstation amongst uh, a huge pool of an unknown substance. Uh, with a pod that's been opened up and scales of an unknown creature coming out of it. I, I told you. I told you, Re, who was the one who was mad at you earlier. I told you there was something weird going on when we found that yellow goo. I told you it was a, an alien. And they all roll their eyes. It's like, you said that about every place we've worked. Why, why would we believe you? Well. Now, I'll see who's crazy. <laughs> he sort of like <laughs> gets ready. He's like, ah, oh, this thing's going to look crazy. I'm like, wild. <laughs> Back in the uh, ship, you continue to 
flashlight at it. Uh, and no! mine was the foot. Ah, we'll do the other foot. And then ten. Oh, that foot. Into the hole. Nothing but a torso and a head oh. left. As the so you see your friend waving a flashlight uh, at the air, and uh, tors- the torso and head of Sonia with not a drop of blood. Don't worry, it's not gory. Uh, on the <laughs> on the freight elevator. Just pieces <laughs> everywhere. Uh, um, but with lots of parts missing. And. Um, they sh- they're they shocked. Uh, I'm going to roll this twice and take the lower one for what they sort of think about you. Uh, well, who's they? Uh, the crew of the mining platform. That be, be, because you. the elevators made it okay. all the way all the way down? Yep. Okay. So now they can see you. Eight? Okay. Five is worse. So they look at you, and Morgan <clears> says, <throat> Sonia. Dana quickly takes in the scene, looks towards you, turns towards you with the mining laser, and says, what did you do to Sonia? Body's gone! <laughs> I don't know! Morgan follows suit, so two of them up there lasers at you. Reese is like, where's the alien? Uh... You see the footprint lift off of the torso. With Run! <laughs> <laughs> Um, invisible creature, uh, body's gone. I don't know. The foot is missing. <sighs> well, we can see injuries on you, right? I've <laughs> <laughs> gone nuts. Yeah, so your hand's hand. gone. Yeah, it's like yeah. leaking out. Yes. Sonia fought back, <laughs> Dana says, seeing this. <laughs> Um, I'm putting you under mine arrest. You can see footprints uh, appearing on the ground and a slight, it doesn't, just a, a slight distortion. It's not even heat waves, but because it's, you know, a kind of screen. Yeah. yeah. So there's just lines of uh, above these footprints that are appearing, moving on the wall next to you, the ceiling above you, and past you. Back Time to put your, your helmet on. <laughs> Very nice. So make your D6 roll. Oh, oh sick. Wow. wow. Is this a way to die? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep getting these. You hear a shriek. <laughs> Echoes and everybody just, what the hell? They, uh, the two, uh, Dana, Takes eyes off of you, but is still aiming the weapon. Morgan just looks around, and Reese like the aliens, <laughs> and just starts <laughs> randomly firing, uh, which could be bad. One, yeah. four, five, six, it hits the alien. One, two, three, it hits somebody else. Hey, okay. You can uh, sort of see the blurred flesh, and the creature begins moving uh, further. Uh, away yeah. from this crowd of people. You can take another shot at it, uh, or run to keep up with it. Uh, but it looks like Dana and Morgan are staying here by the elevator because they're convinced that W607 is the culprit. Uh, son is murdered. Mm. I'm going to run after it. Nice. <laughs> Make another attack roll. No! Oh, no! There so goes your hand. That's what, <laughs> for for this. It's just a strike against your ammo. So just miss. okay, and, and I get three. three. Strikes, right? Okay. Uh, you're chasing it. Re, it's like sees you running away. He's like, "What are you doing? Where's the alien?" <laughs> I'm chasing the goddamn alien. Come help me! I told you guys. Come on, Morgan. He goes to <laughs> drag Morgan away. So Morgan's, uh, you know, two. He stays with Dana and doesn't like you. Twelve. He runs with three. Seven. He doesn't know him. I haven't gotten any sevens. It's usually only sevens. Uh, ten. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. So Morgan and Rhea are going uh, with you. It's like, where should we shoot? <laughs> they look at where you're aiming your gun. Where, where's, where's, what's my HUD mask? Footprints are appealing on the ceiling. Okay. Ceiling, no! All right. Fours and fives and sixes are good. No more hits. So they, they, the creature is actively evading. You can see the footprints are moving yeah. towards one wall. And like, it's serpentining All on over. the ceiling. All right. Dio oh looks towards Sonia and towards you and looks back at them and sort of thinks for a moment. Let's get back on the elevator. 
I have been on the elevator the whole time. I don't think I stepped off. Oh. My <laughs> <laughs> mistake. I can't get on the elevator anymore. It goes to step onto the elevator and just stares at Sonia's head and body and looks down uh, at them and looks at you and is kind of overwhelmed by it all. It's like when they come back, they're going to court martial your ass. I don't know if they will come back. You have the weapon. No, we need to defend ourselves. This happened before me, and look at my arm. All right, I'll re-roll her reaction to you. Six. Yeah. Did Sonya do that? What answer would you accept? Looks down at Sonya and back at you. What happened? Invisible creature. There's a three, three from footprint on her chest, and then body parts started going missing. I flash a flashlight and <laughs> sounds. <laughs> so we should run. We should run. <laughs> Pushes the elevator button. And the elevator starts going up. <laughs> Screw these people. We're gonna leave leave the rest of the crew down oh, there. God, I'm <laughs> down there. With her foot, she nudges the uh, face of Sonia to face away, <laughs> and sort of turns her back to that business. Can I? I want to pick up the moonshine and hand it over. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. She just sort of she just slaps her face. Uh, so are Sonia's eyes open? Oh yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the kind of detail we need. Yeah. Uh, you're up top. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah, I'm up top. There's. Uh, just I hear the elevator coming up. Yeah. Uh, I you're hear the banging the on the, the elevator the bay the door from. Uh, you know, uh, I assume it's Doctor Giovanni, uh, but. It's a squelchy banging to it. Oh. <laughs> it's getting quieter. It, 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 it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of muffled. Like, <laughs> it, it is kind of gelatinous. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, so um, I am uh, going to wait for the elevator to surface and uh, uh, determine what has gone down on. Uh, below and relay what I have discovered. All right. All right. Just time then for your elevator ride to rendezvous with you. So we'll get some time with you and the creature. You get another shot uh, off at it in this tunnel uh, before it opens up into the kind of bigger mind tunnel where everyone's shouting, Mike, 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 Mike. So you can make another attack roll and your friends will too. Uh, nice. Six. Two sixes. Uh, so is that creature dead yet? We, right? Got, you got four hits on it. It's still moving. <laughs> uh, uh, so one of them goes wide. One strikes. <laughs> echoes off the walls. Screech, screech, screech. And then it's on the ceiling centrally, and it goes out of your sight, like up the... So if you're going in a tunnel and it's going on the ceiling, it goes like up and out of your sight. Do you want to rush through to follow it, or how do you proceed? You're at the mm. end of a tunnel, and it's in the bigger chamber beyond. Where the hell is Mike? Is this Mike? Um, so I haven't been able to visualize the creature at all. Your HUD isn't able to. Yeah. It's, like it, it's just a fuzzy uh, area that looks Basically, like it should, but like a little distortion on it. Okay. Um, you can see the footprints. Ree and Morgan, did you have find any evidence of Mike when you were in here? Roll the d6. Two. No, I didn't find any evidence of Mike or Kentaro. Oh yeah, because Kentaro was down here too. Or Rosa. Rosa, too. Come yeah, on. Rosa went She's down. She's been gone for a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do I care about them? 
Or do I just care about the... <laughs> yeah, let's think back to your... Um, creature, yeah. Somebody. Yeah. Um, we need to find Mike and get the hell out of here. <clears throat> let's go where you haven't been before. Which of these tunnels do we go down? Very nice. Uh, so you're in the tunnel, come out, uh, and you're looking through. Went down there, went down there, Rosa checked there yesterday. We haven't gone over there. There isn't really a tunnel there, and then one, two, two is Ree, three is Morgan. And three is Ed. Got it here. Uh, Morgan. Yes, sweet Morgan. Uh, as you're speaking, you see on the wall, just just in your periphery, on the wall above Morgan, a footprint appears. Uh, and then there, <laughs> uh, right arm goes by by. It's like a melon baller, just this whole. Part. Oh gosh. <laughs> and, and their gun is gone now because that's what they were using to hold it. So mm. it onto the floor. <gasps> and you can tell the creature is standing above the now disarmed Morgan. What do you do? Incendiary. Nice. <laughs> I didn't realize you had an incendiary. <laughs> Might be a mine, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That does more damage than just one injury. Roll your pyramid die, or, yeah, pyramid die. The double pyramid die, or just the single? Single pyramid. Single, okay. A two, this is the one that's pointing up. So it'll be a two hits on the creature for that one incendiary, and you got more where that came from. A uh, bloom of fire appears and outlines what appear to be uh, six you know, large trunk-like uh, tendrils holding out of the wall in various places and an amorphous central form and more shrieking and it uh, moves, you can tell, just from the brief moment of the fire cloud that it's moving up and you see the footprints going up into the ceiling, uh, which is very high and arched and it's moving towards that crack where the computer and the pod was. Mm. So it is now retreating from them. Okay. Uh, Morgan's. Not doing so bad. Morgan's gone. Screw Morgan. Re, let's go down this. Morgan! <laughs> Re falls down. Morgan, she's, uh, Re, she's gone. Let's go down this tunnel. <laughs> roll, uh, well, I'll roll this with advantage since you're helping the higher number. Uh, seven is neutral. But, but Morgan. And a seven again is neutral. He's kind of torn between. We gotta. Morgan, are you okay? And Morgan's just like, <laughs> looking towards the lost arm and back towards Re. <laughs> well, she's not losing blood. She's just in shock. Um, can I give her a stimmy prick and she can come with us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Real, so let's say for each stimmy prick you give her, there's a 50% chance that, yes, she'll get up and go with you. So. Burn one stimmy prick and roll a d6. If it's four, five, six, yes. He's up and at him. Let's do it. Nice. Okay, yeah. she's up and at him. Okay. Yeah. Out of way, Morgan. Whoa, she just oh, totally out of way, Morgan. She walks this way, like to not <laughs> look at her missing arm and picks up the gun on the other hand. She's like, I'm basically ambidextrous. <laughs> and you go down. Good job, Morgan. You got this. Good job. <laughs> Go down the hall uh, to where uh, the last place you haven't searched to spend some time in there. You know it. Cool. Cool. Nothing to worry about. You uh, arrive at a little space. And... <laughs> it's fine. We're cool. It's good. In uh, at a the mine depths now. They've gone to a place that's like, this isn't a tunnel, but I guess we could check. Rhea is going ahead, and there's just like a crack in the mine, and you have to like go down. There's a, a shelf of rock, which is a special, an escarpment, mm. and you go down, and you're kind of spelunking now. Mm. And you get to this tiny, you got to be crouching to look there, and your lights shine down, and there is a vac suit. Somebody mm. took off their vacuum sealed suit in this area. Uh, and there is a splash of yellow goo against the wall. Uh, and then there's a word, there's also one of the mining lasers 
and written, scorched into the wall by the mining laser is the word silence. The elevator arrives at the top <laughs> and he rendezvous. Uh, I go to, I don't know your name. Old Trapper. Old Trapper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just relay everything that I have experienced there going down the elevator. Um, Sonia was just just annihilated bit by bit and just disappeared. Her head fell off going down to the mine. I was... Um, Dana runs away down to the quarters while you're talking. <laughs> Go on. Blamed and uh, we have to go. Uh, lights. Well, but we, 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 we can't leave uh, Krikna. Yeah. Krikna. Uh, where is Krikna? Krikna is left down there. There's these beasts. Who else uh, is with Krikna? Can... I uh, think we need a better plan of attack because the weapons that we have are not working. So mm. we need to go back. You know, the, the bathrooms, you know, it's right away. The showers were uh, broken. And then right. all the other bathrooms. Mm. Have you noticed anything well, yourself? Uh, our bathroom has been likewise destroyed. And I found these trail, this trail of scales. This, does this look familiar to you? I didn't see any scales. I didn't no. see anything. Maybe when you pointed out the scales from the cat, if you did, that would be a, the reminder. Yeah. As much as you can tell. When I scanned the cat of the... Yes. No yep. Senses. Yep. Okay. Uh, 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 Dana comes back with bed sheets and quickly wraps up the torso and head in them and says, we need to take your ship and get out of here. No, we're not. We're not leaving Krikna and the others behind. We have to. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm the pilot of this ship, and everybody goes with us, or nobody does. I'm pretty sure Jerome had a gun. She goes and walks back towards the the quarters. Mm. Jerome, dunk, 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 dunk. Kush, kicks open the door. <laughs> I guess he's not here. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Click, click. Comes back out with the gun. Hmm. Dana. All right. This will help. Well, we're going to go back down with that gun and kill whatever. Uh... I think we should try and bring water down to vessels of water, either canteens or something to spray it, just some kind of water since it seems like mm. something here is avoiding water so much. Mm. We should bring that down too, just to be sure, because I don't think there's no water down there. Dana runs up. Who's that gun in one hand, pitcher of water in the other? <laughs> there's, there's more pitchers in the kitchen. Yeah. All right, let's get all the pitchers we can. Right, and so. Is there any like um, like backpack or anything that I could try and fashion something on my back to wear with water in it? So you could mm. put like a Culligan jug in a backpack and wear that, but do they have a Culligan jug on this ship? Roll a d6. Four, five, six, they do. One, two, three. Nah, there's nothing that big. Ah, there's nothing that big. Okay. There's a sink in the kitchen. You could each carry, right, two handfuls. Even Dana could carry two handfuls, but she's not going to do that. She wants a gun in hand. Yeah. So one pitcher, two, three, four, five. You get a five pitchers of water, a gun, and there's no Culligan jugs, but is there something else you could think of? You know, cups. I don't know. You could somehow fashion cups. But if you, if you want to have anything more than five pitchers and a gun, it's going to take more time. That's all I can think of. It's got to be something on board our ship that has, uh, that's a larger vessel. A wheelbarrow that you can fill in the shower or something like that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. We don't have a working shower. What, you know, what container would you have on the ship? Oh, yeah. Well, why can't we just take the bladder out of the ship? The, the where the water is held in the ship. Wow, mm. that's got to be big though. It's yeah, like a, whole, a lot of water. You could get, you could mess with the pipes to try and access water and fill something. But I feel like that bladder would be too big to yeah. drag onto the freight elevator. The, well, when we, you, we have a when couple of water busted, coolers on our ship, don't we? <laughs> Again, roll a d6 to see if there are water coolers on the ship. Every yeah. ship, there's Four a fifty percent chance of water coolers. <laughs> This is, uh, that, uh, yeah, this is just that, basic science. That old shit. <laughs> you, you think back to when uh, you saw the broken shower. There were eight working showers in this mine station. So there are working showers if you want to fill a big vessel. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we just yeah. have to find a big vessel. Uh, the crates that they've been that the automated mines drills have been pitching ore into. If you empty those out, you can fill in a block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Is there a large hose that we could hook up to water mm. and bring that down with us? Well, that's a mile down. That's a got to be a long hose. <laughs> Space. Yeah. <laughs> are, and, you're, and, and you're an android, you can do anything. The vacuum hoses have been continually shuffling ore up, just sucking it up from yeah. those automated drills so, down there. Can you reverse it? Yeah. Yep. You can reverse the direction. Uh, so you go up to them, to the computer, reverse direction, all the ore gets spat out down there. You hear rocks clattering behind you in the silence chamber as you all take a beat to just look at the horror of this whatever is going on. Back up to you. Uh, so you have a hose that's sucking, uh, but you need to get water into it. Well, we'll just hook it up to the water valve that connects to the shower. So take the shower head off. Open up the valves, and we'll have a source of water. Okay, it'll just take time. The hose only goes so far, and like goes up here. But there are multiple hoses. You could dismantle some of the hoses to make a big, long contraption that basically goes towards the shower. Do that. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Take some time. Time passes. <laughs> take some time. I'm gonna say it takes two rolls of time, uh, and while that's happening, you have found all there is to find of Mike. Uh oh. Ah! And Reed just shouts and runs the hell away out of there. <laughs> Scrambles up, is gone from you. Morgan collapses, armless, just looks at the crumpled vac suit and the splash of goo and sees the little tag on the back of the vac suit that says Mike. And it's just like... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Who else is there? Kantara. Rosa and Kantara. Rosa, okay. This is what I need. You took the elevator up, right? Yes. The We're elevator up. starts going with, back with, down. With Dana. All right. On its own. Oh, no. And we're, and we're up, up uh, above ground. Yes. What's our process? Like how far? Well, we do halfway. We, do okay. it's halfway down already. You are halfway done with building your hose water setup. Okay. Uh, you so hear the elevator me? start to move on its own. It's you and the uh, rebooked it. And Morgan's Dana. Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Dana. Okay. No, Dana's with them. Yeah, with Dana, the gun. Dana, Dana's with us. Picture. Good. Okay. <laughs> Where's Jerome uh, all this time? We don't know. We don't know. Rosa, Kantara. Do I hear any response? Silence. Silence, just like what was written on the wall. Um, uh, Morgan, we must get out of here. We have to go up top and leave. Grabs, drags herself up. <laughs> okay. Mike is gone. We will be too. We don't move. Got it. Okay. Morgan is willing to follow you. <laughs> Wants to keep a hand on you. <laughs> You make it back into the big mine area. There's kind of to the, you could go back to Flesh Pod where the alien evidently ran off to. The elevator sounds like it's coming down. You don't see wherever you went. I'll wait for the elevator. We gotta get out of here. Right. Right. Hubs up, waiting for the elevator. Rosa, Cantara. You're missing right. Reed too. You hook up the water. <laughs> you abandoned us. <laughs> uh, water 
you get it hooked up this giant hose which is going like what 50 meters over to the showers now starts rushing water down so uh you can see the elevators up above mm. coming down there's a tube coming down which usually would be rocketing with the sound of ore but now you hear water rushing down through it uh and it like goes past you on the wall here um evens it's you odds it's you. Morgan's leg is melon balled off. You realize that the HUD has been detecting old footprints, like no new ones have been appearing, so it doesn't seem like there's been any movement. The creature has been standing next to you ever since you came up to the elevator shaft. Oh, God. Morgan falls over. <laughs> what do you do? Um... <laughs> Nice. <laughs> you hear the fire, the gun fire from down below just after you hook up the water hose. Roll a d6. Oh! Nice. That's another hit on your ammo as you just spray air. And then roll with disadvantage to dodge the creature. If you succeed, you only take one injury. If you fail, you take this many injuries. Roll uh, four, five, six is the better of those. Oh! Three. All right, three oh, injuries God. as the creature oh bites half your neck. <laughs> okay, that's Yikes. not good. Oh, that's not good. Hate to see it. It's gonna <laughs> leave a mark. Yeah. Okay, that's one. All right, uh, half your neck. We'll just say blood loss for the second one. Okay. And shock maybe for the third one. It's gonna go okay. to unless anybody has anything better. I thought you don't bleed. Nobody else's blood. Oh, yeah. Well, you discover, having been bitten and, you know, having blood, that when it bites, there's just a little sound and a quick snip, but a powerful suction. And in fact, when it bites, the reason no blood comes out is because it actively sucks a ton of blood out when it bites mm. to, like, dry up the area around there, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm not loss. actively bleeding, but I have blood loss. Yes. Okay. Wow. Very Stimmy. neat. Very good. Uh, uh, lose one of your your uh, wounds. Uh, yeah, lose one of your stim things, and also one of your wounds goes away. No more shock. Yep. And then up above, you hear the sound, the commotion of combat down below. What do you yeah. do? Dana holds a gun and just aims it down at the. <laughs> well, I'm I'm shaft. I'm sending my camera drone robot. Oh the yeah, we have a camera drone. Yeah, it's seven thirty. Just so we know. Yeah. All right. Um, could we do ten fifteen more minutes to wrap it up? This could be the climax, or do you? Sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 Your drone appears, your face is on it. You can communicate through it. It's sort of by you. You don't see any alien, but you do see your mercenary. All right. Nimrod or whatever your name is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, g g give us your report. Re is gone. Rosa and Kantara are nowhere to be found. Mike is dead. Morgan lost two limbs. I have a wound to the neck. We're getting on this elevator and getting out of here. What What is the source of all these injuries? Some invisible alien creature you hear the creature click it's still next to you it moves in for another attack isn't the water doing anything the water is that yeah let's back up so we all have the same picture of what's up with the water uh you're in a hallway and at the end of the hallway like that big mighty area where it opens up mm -hmm. is where there's, it's like shooting out water at the end okay but in the area where you are it's just the big this size, like, hose of water on the wall next to you. Shoot the hose. There you go. But water comes up, splashes the creature. You see it run away. Where's the but, but, now? but But they're on the elevator, right? Not, they're at the it bottom. It hasn't come down yet. Come, okay. down, but the creature okay. runs away, and it's gone. That splash of water really harmed it. 
Nets. God, how many well, how many kill points does it need? <laughs> we can't know that. <laughs> oh, okay. ah. it, it, usually in a game, I would tell you, but when it's an invisible alien, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't know that. Uh, yeah. The elevator arrives. You're able to get on it. It goes up. There's an alien down there. Who knows where most of the people are? Ree's not here. Dana, you three. Uh, that, uh, that's it. That's the only people that you know are so still awesome. around. What do you do? Bye bye. Bye bye, Ypsilum. <laughs> you go. You want to go back to the ship? Yes, I I do, but I'm gonna wait around until everybody gets up to make sure that everything's the hoses are running right and everything. All right, all right. Uh, what about you? I want to lure the creature on the elevator and, and kill it when it gets to the top. Uh, what would you use to kill it? Well, I we've got water and I've got my harpoon gun. Nice. That's, that's all I have. Though. All right. Um, I'll bite. Roll a d. This is it. This is the end of the game. You're ready to go. You're basically, I'm imagining, at the ship. Like you're willing to look down the hall and look at whatever he's doing, but you're also ready to take off at a mm -hmm. moment's notice. Uh, you're setting up a water harpoon trap. <laughs> Where are you? I'm questions. waiting by the elevator, making sure everything's fine. Uh, the hoses and everything. And I got my uh, nail gun. Time passes. <laughs> you know, Time passes. in case. Time passes. Dana's like, fuck this, goes on the ship with you, buckles up. It's like, we need to get out of here ASAP. Time passes. Time passes. The elevator, which went up on its own, right? Somebody or something at the bottom sends it back down after a long time. It starts coming back up. We're the only two that are by the elevator? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were a mercenary. Now, the scene. Yeah. Nope. now this is it. Get Roll out. a D. This is incredible. Uh, success. The water trap is successful and you destroy the creature. Failure. It eats you. It kills you. You're dead. You're gone. You willing to, you're willing to put your life on the line to, to, for this final fight? Yeah. It's, uh, I, <laughs> well, you're going against character here, old yeah, Trapper. I, well, I, I did it once and I, I need to... Redeem yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, W six oh seven? Um, I will not leave you behind. I'll yeah. Be there yeah. For you. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So you got two chances at the water trap. Both you roll. Uh, if any of you succeed, that means the water trap succeeds. But if whoever fails dies. All right. Okay. Well, let's. Let's go. It's cost let's do of this. war. Oh. It's got me on the table. Uh, oh yeah, it's yeah. under there at all. I guess I'm dead. Oh, great. So no, the it cooks up. You dead. throw some water, you shoot a harpoon gun, it just hits the wall. Yeah. The water just splashes uselessly. Your head just gone. <laughs> Damn it. Come on, W607. W607. You gotta, Let's do it. You gotta eradicate. <laughs> W607's other arm goes gone, gone, falls to the ground, legs gone, looking through the port at you as Dana <laughs> shuts the Close door. The <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> the hunting of Ypsilon 14. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Oh, that was great. <laughs> what a thrill! <laughs> wow. <sighs> So, so some of it you were just creating as we went on, and some of it is from. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I knew where incredible. all the NPCs were at the beginning. Okay. The adventure said kind of what their personality. NPC means the non-player characters. Okay. The cast. Yep. This kind of says their personality. I added some details. Has all the rooms and what's in all the rooms. Mm. And then the dice were determining where the monster was. If it was attacking, and who it was attacking. Okay. If the elevator okay. was moving, if the trajectory was shifting, if the cat was moving around, things like that. Okay. Yeah. And that was my invention. All of those elements were in this, but I tied it to that time passes die to kind of make it dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, that was... I don't know what, what we need to do with Dr. Giovanni, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> now he's just... Yeah, the, so the, the closing shot of the movie is just that... <laughs> We gotta get out. <laughs> I can't believe floating it happened. Just space. you and Dana floating. And then here, here's here's Giovanni in a pool of yellow blue. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only. that's the shot after the like yeah. credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bones friend. and goo. <laughs> that's good. Wow. Uh, I wonder what that code was and what silence meant. The code. 
Remember how you were hacking that yes. keypad and you found out that it was oh, a four digit that code. Was the code. That was the password. Okay. Could have got in like that. Silence. Uh, you were exposed to the goo, come to think of it, which is significant. Yeah. So after the credits, after that, so we should say what happens is all right, everything goes to black, movie's over, but then <gasps> your head comes back. <laughs> <laughs> and you see your body there. The camera looks back at your head, pans out, and you have a little spider body made of yellow goo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dun, dun, that's the actual. Uh, <laughs> so the, the goo bonds with you and sort of changes you and heals you, but also mm. ultimately turns you into a puddle. And importantly, as it changes your brain cells, it drives you insane. Mm. So silence was just his sort of final insane. Brain. Yeah. Okay. Wonder where Good. Well, you, you put a lot of time into this. I'm, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm right, thank Christoph? You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, was, no, this was fun. Was amazing. Yes. Yeah. You're good at what you do. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome.